All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming live with the first game of ATDL Season 5. We are beginning with the beta division. This is a game between Samsung Galaxy Nut and No Time for Name, iNut versus NTFN. I'm joined today by my favorite man, Natsumi, my second favorite man, Enigmatic, and my least favorite man, Blue Sapphire. What's up? <laughs> dude, I, what an introduction, dude. <laughs> I actually kind of yeah. fucked up there. I was supposed to put Enigmatic as my least favorite man, but uh, I just read the names in Discord. Yeah, I, I, I was about the question, so after I say that, okay, I read to be cool now. <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, uh, so Samsung Galaxy S not versus No Time for Name. Um, I do recognize a few names here. I'm not gonna lie, just from looking them up before. Um, so. The interesting thing I'm going to probably be looking at for this game, right, is the bans. Um, obviously, right, because this is a, uh, a amateur league. Uh, most likely, maybe perhaps they, they're they probably stealing some stuff from uh, the more, uh, much more major leagues, such as uh, ASL, right? Um, so you think we're going to see an Alchemist cheese pick? I, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest. Um, if I do see one, uh, I wouldn't be surprised as well. But I, I mean, I kind of feel like it's so early in the start, right? You kind of want to play seriously. You want to decide where you are ranked among these teams. You want to just have a feel of how things are going to go because nothing Absolutely. is at stake here. Yes, your final placement is at stake, but remaining. for the most part, you just want to play the game and just feel really yeah. good. Um, you talk about bands. Uh, there are some heroes that I feel are going to be very, very contested. Uh, in particular, the Zeus. I took a look at the two mid heroes. Uh, sorry, the two mid players, Miracle at Dawn and uh, Harry. Both of them very, very proficient at the Zeus hero. Harry with a seventy percent win rate on Zeus, and Miracle at Dawn a more modest sixty percent. Still very good, almost three hundred games on that hero. So these two teams definitely going to want to fight it out over that. Um, also, uh, we're going to look at some of these carry picks. Uh, I don't really think the support meta is going to change all that much. Yeah. yeah, the right, the um, I think the idea right in the uh, in uh, these kind of leagues is the uh, support picks always go first. Personally, I wouldn't mind to see a uh, early early pick up for the mid laner, right? Especially if they know that the and the, the your mid laner understands that it'll be perfectly fine, right? If they know they can outplay the opposing enemy mid, it should be fine. In, in fact, if they pick Zeus right now, I wouldn't be surprised or mind either, because again, what really do you want to pick into Zeus that'll cause you problems, really, right? If 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 the enemy mid laner knows how to play Quop, Zeus is okay in that matchup. <laughs> At level three, he's perfectly fine. He just trades harass, right? And he will usually come out fine. And that's sort of the idea, right? If they're both very good Zeus players, then I I think stealing Zeus would be perfectly fine early. Um, but you know, usually we see support. Um, if either of these uh, teams pick A, uh, I would I would also not be surprised because that's actually very highly contested considering Alchemist again is still in the pool, right? Uh, Gyrocopter early pickup again. I, I absolutely love this when people uh, when uh, uh, when teams do this, right? When gy when they pick up their core, understanding that right, if they want to counter this core, they're gonna sacrifice their uh, their individual skill levels on those heroes to counter said core. So. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of loving this early Jared Copper pickup. You know, clean, uh, mid, uh, uh, decent mid game, amazing late game. Uh, paired with the Crystal Maiden, keeps that sustain up. Um, obviously, the concerns there are the um, the implications for the early game, right? That's a, that's a more of a defensive support than anything. Yeah, and they're developing a nasty, nasty weakness as well. Both of those heroes very, very squishy. And uh, once you get into that hyper late game, you're going to find that this Crystal Maiden and the Gyrocopter, both of them are going to feel very, very easy to take down. Um, the weakness of that Gyrocopter, as you said, you know, you might have to sacrifice something to counter it. Well, not really. Gyrocopter is a hero countered by pretty much anything. Very, very high single target <laughs> damage. He dies. Uh, he can't out carry a lot of heroes in the late game. He doesn't have the best laning either. So Gyrocopter is a very mixed bag. And sometimes a mixed bag is what you need. But first picking a mixed bag so early in the game does leave you very open to some counters. Asnut can pretty much pick anyone, anything they want now. They could go for an anti-mage strat. They could pick, I don't know, a Terra Blade. They could pick well, anything, right? 
<clears throat> well, that's the idea, right? Is that your your core, uh, your your safe laner is gonna be your flex pick, uh, is gonna be your uh, definite pick, while your support and your mid laner will be your flex pick. That that's kind of the idea here. Jarcopter isn't uh, gonna be single care handedly carrying the game, and the Shadow Demon pick up kind of uh, interesting because I believe that's more of a deny pick for anything else that could be chosen right now. But at, at the moment, it doesn't really counter Jarcopter. It, it's well, ironically, Gyrocopter is perfectly fine dealing with the Shadow Demon. The, again, the thing I, I do want to see with Gyrocopter, right, is, is again, some, some sort of mid lane that can sort of pair up with the Gyrocopter to do uh, mid-game damage. <clears throat> Not <clears throat> necessarily the Zeus or the Quap or <clears throat> otherwise. I wouldn't mind Ember Spirit as well. Yeah, you want something that is up in that grill, high tempo, and Mirana does fit that mode, that's why s yeah. are going to take it out. Uh, no time for name, they're going to take out that faceless void, so don't want any of that lockdown, don't want any of that single target damage. Because as we said, the CM and this Jericop, they're already very vulnerable. Um, you don't want to make them in the walking bags of gold in this mid-game. Um, I don't really like the Ogre Magi and the Shadow Demon dual pairing so far. Are you okay with that? Do you think the OM is going to be mitigated by the fact that it's going to be put in the 3 position instead of the 5? I'm not really sure. Mm, it's it's gonna be interesting. Uh, both it's a Naga Siren ban. I mean, obviously, uh, Gyrocopter does fine against Naga Siren, but the interesting part about that is that means their mid probably won't, or perhaps they just really don't like facing that uh, hero. Of course, it scales uh, faster than Gyrocopter, and uh, but but the, but the idea is right that um, Gyrocopter, uh, although. His mid game is not as good as it anymore. His hyper late game has always been as good as it's always been, right? The, the flat cannon just legitimately insta gives supports. So, um, the idea that the gyrocopter will be okay mid and then, uh, probably have trouble early and then have a, have a solid late game. Uh, we do, I do really want to see a, a good mid coming out. Ember Spirit's still in the pool, right? Uh, we still have Storm Spirit. I, I, Sorcerer would be perfectly fine here. Shadow Demon doesn't really do anything. Uh, they pick up the Beastmaster, though. Uh, it's just some good setup. If they pick the Invoker, I honestly wouldn't be surprised. Roar into Sunstrike is one of those classics. Right, Skyrath Mage mid is also very solid here. Just buys more time. You know, all in for that mid. Uh, sorry, sorry, that mid game push. Uh, Crystal Maiden, of course, helps with that sustained mid lane. Basically, uh, Skyrath Mage pressure just increases. And Underlord, right? Uh, Gyrocopter actually gets completely countered by this because of that aura. He, in fact, has a base damage of 47. And with that Underlord de uh, negation aura, he loses like six more damage. So, um, he's gonna be attacking, uh, for as much damage as that Crystal Maiden, which is not what you want. Not what you'd want, but sometimes what you need, uh, especially, you know, you already picked the hero, so NTFN, you're going to have to come up with something right here with this Gyrocopter. Of course, the Gyrocopter can go in any position. We've seen him play 1, we've seen him play 2, we've seen him play 3, 4, and 5, so... Uh, they have a lot of flexibility here, but I not, they have that very same flexibility with the Olga Magi. Um, Olga Magi, there we you know... go. Yeah. Okay. There we yeah. go. So, yeah, the Gyrocopter was 100% a flex pick. So, uh, Gyrocopter, um, uh, as you said, could be a mid or a four. I wouldn't, I honestly, a four Gyrocopter doesn't sound that bad if I think about it, right? That transitions into the late game, uh, pretty solidly with Maelstrom, right? You just go magic damage with your Gyrocopter. Uh, Crystal Maiden, obviously the five, probably. Um, Beastmaster four also doesn't sound really bad here. I mean, the, these, uh, this lineup could very much just be mid lane, fifth position, third position, uh, first position, but the, the concept of the flex is, is still there. And I think, uh, I not is confused, I would say, or maybe they expected this, you know, maybe they expected this chaos knight to come out, but I'm sure I expected the Jarakop to do the position one. And, uh, certainly they did because they're definitely taking their time, making sure that, uh, their carry pick will be solid as well as their mid pick because they have been going in order from, uh, five, four, three, two, one. So that will be their, uh, mid or their safe lane. Uh, but regardless, right? The, um, the KS Knight pickup will do solidly against their Bristleback because, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Reality Rift actually turns the Bristleback around. Um, I'm not quite sure about that. Uh, someone can give me a ring check, uh, for that stat, but, uh, that's, that's usually how I remember it. Five seconds remaining. I'm not too sure about that myself. Uh, not really a huge fan of playing Chaos Knight. It's kind of a boring hero, but, um, it, it might be what they need in this game, uh, 
the good thing about the Chaos Knight as well, of course, uh, it destroys that Shadow Demon, destroys the Ogre Magi. It supports that are typically tanky. They run into this Chaos Knight and suddenly they just vanish, right? So that's the wonderful thing about this hero. But the other thing about Chaos Knight is that it's also hard countered by Underlord because most of Chaos Knight's damage comes from stats. And Underlord mm-hmm. loves it when your damage comes from stats because he reduces base damage. So, uh, <laughs> Very much, yeah. Seconds. Also, those illusions take much more damage from that percentage based uh, HP. Um, I believe Firestorm, Firestorm, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's just it's gonna be dangerous, especially with four Chaos Knight, right? Viper mid lane. So it looks like uh, Inut has a very uh, clear lineup here, which is buff the Bristleback Viper will uh, most likely actually no because of the Underlord that actually opens up the Viper's build a little bit here because Underlord can then go the Greaves Viper can just go straight into Rod instead of uh, going back for those Greaves. So we will. We will see probably a stronger Viper uh, build for the mid game, but again, I'm kind of concerned for uh, oh, for S- uh, I not here, right? Bristleback, uh, as we saw at TI, you can uh, buy Diffusal and Bristleback becomes very potato. Um, so uh, it's a bit concerning. Um, yeah, we, to we say even the least. That hero right here, it was the gyrocopter. Yeah, Diffusal it was the gyrocopter. That destroyed yeah, he, that Bristleback. He literally went. Go- he went. He had two items. He had Ags. This diffusal and he just destroyed Bristleback. So I'm a, again, it's kind of a, a take, take that Bristleback pick with a grain of salt, right? There is only one defensive ability for that said Bristleback, right? The, um, the disruption uh, aside from, uh, Underlord's ulti. So there's gonna be, gonna be some interesting things they're gonna have to do with this Bristleback. No heal either, right? There's absolutely no heal for this Bristleback, which means that he will have to somehow win early. Or he will be falling behind. And the last pick, Rubik. Uh, I, I'm oh, not this like... is a mistake. This is a mistake. There's nothing to steal. Yeah, there's oh. nothing to steal. I was going to say, this is a really weird pickup. What did they steal? That is a mid Rubik. Um, he picked the mid Rubik because he's comfortable with it against uh, the Viper. And it does work because Rubik has a higher base damage and can reduce the Viper's base damage. But yeah. that's not really what you want, is it? it... Oh, well, uh, so is, is that a, all over them if you're Rubik? Is that a, is that a support gyrocopter or a support beastmaster? Can you confirm for that for me? I can double check on those players. Uh, but they are using all these weird nicknames. Uh, people don't use strange nicknames, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. It yeah, just, please, uh, please, please use your actual names when you register, not your nick, uh, your weird names that you go into Dota with. Uh, okay, so EG is their four player. That is going to be a gyrocopter four. Okay, so yeah, that's that's very hard to control. I, okay, I'm not I'm not gonna trash on it, right? Because that's everyone else's job. But the the thing I want to be looking at, right, is the the fact that this gyrocopter and this crystal maiden has a really bad time trying to set up an early game against an ogre magi who just walks up and bonks them, right? Like um, ogre magi is literally fast enough to walk in front of the maiden after about five seconds of chase. Which is kind of dangerous, because uh, that means your Maiden will be run down very easily. Right, Gyrocopter, Crystal Maiden like, is not the very best duo support. And if that Beastmaster wants to support, he's going to be getting that Crystal Maiden and sacking that Chaos Knight. Or he's getting nothing, and they have to try lane to try and secure this farm for this Chaos Knight. Prepare for battle. Okay, in any case, it seems like both teams have a plan with how what they're going to do at this point of time. So, uh, you want to pick one of the teams to introduce Blue Sapphire and then I'll do the other uh, one? Uh, sure, I'll do an uh, TFN here. We have uh, Bisoma on the Beastmaster. We have Windmaker on the Crystal Maiden. We have uh, Miracle at Dawn and the, on the Rubik. And we have uh, Izzy on the Gyrocopter. And uh, their carry position is Pattern uh, on the Chaos Knight. Okay, and I'm going to do Inut. So on the side of Inut, we have ZSX on that Shadow Demon. We have Lilo on this Viper. Shisui, who's going to take the Bristleback downtown on the safe lane. Uh, we have Paradigm on the off lane Underlord. And we have Potato Cat on the safe lane Ogre Magi. So already we're going to see this duel on duel action. Beastmaster and Crystal Maiden facing up against this Ogre Magi and Bristleback. Uh, both of them perfectly aware of where each other are. They see each other across that river. So probably nothing going on down in this bottom lane. Might want to contest it with the Bristleback Quills. We'll see about that. But up in this top lane, though, we're going to see this Chaos Knight and the Underlord run into each other. They're going to trade blows. And EG already has the homing missile going out. You're going to take quite a bit of damage there if that missile lands on you, which it will. But Chaos Knight doesn't want to chase him. Yeah, just you can't really contest that. I mean, 
the, the kind of the problem. Oh my god, Zuma yeah. falling very low on this bottom lane. One more kills is gonna do it. No, one more. Needs one more. And they will get it. Yes, they will. And now Crystal Maiden gonna fall as well. No mana on that. He can mango, but he's gonna die regardless. They get the ignite. And no way out. Yeah. That's kind of the problem, right? I mentioned, right? This, this Beastmaster either gets the Maiden to have an easier lane, or they sack top lane. And they kind of did both right there. They tried to dive against an Ogre Magi, Shadow Demon, and Bristleback. And uh, what do you get? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Uh, so it wasn't the Shadow Demon. It was actually the Viper, right? But regardless, they cannot fight that. It is a Beastmaster and a Crystal Maiden here. And they're trying to secure this lane for this Beastmaster by putting a Crystal Maiden here. But I completely disagree. This is not... So the thing you want, this Beastmaster will lose to this uh, Bristleback 100% of the time. And what you've just done is sacrifice your Chaos Knight for absolutely nothing. He will not get CS in this lane, and that is because it's an Underlord with a Shadow Demon. And Gyrocopter can't even poke as a, again, support, because this aura is just going to stop him from doing any significant damage. You see the Shadow Demon already positioning forward, because again, he understands this Chaos Knight will not walk up and attack him. In fact, he skilled Chaos Strike first, which is, I mean, it's for sustain, right? The crit sustain is actually very solid, but you can see how much trade they're taking already. The Chaos Knight has to be forced back into tower here. Shadow Demon Purge, or Shadow Poison, uh, will just pressure them back, and I mean, this is kind of the problem, right? You can't, you, the Shirecopter support can't do this. And uh, we're talking about skills, and in the same vein, you know, Windmaker on that Crystal Maiden, he leveled the Frostbite level 1, you never want to do that. You need that Crystal Nova, because otherwise you don't deal any harass at all. And this is why they're having such a hard time in this bottom lane. So, NTFN, they've already shot themselves in the foot with these two support picks and uh, the way they're playing. Oh, as I say that, oh, Shadow Demon being gone on, he disrupts himself, trying to prolong the fight. Panda's gonna fall below then! No, he gets a sick off, and now ZSX on the run. They see him through the trees due to that ward. You can't juke no this. Or can he? Oh, he can! He jukes it? No mana. There's no mana. He can't, he can't rocket barrage. Yes, There's man. no way he gets this kill. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it was quite close, right? But, you, I mean, the, the kind of the issue there is, right? Even if that did go to a trade, that was a Shadow Demon for a Phantom, uh, uh, sorry, a Chaos Knight, right? And that's not, that, that's not either, that's not an ideal pickup anyway. Um, but of course, it would have been nice if Shadow Demon got picked up. And as you saw, the, the Shadow Copter used all of his mana to drop that Shadow Demon. And the kind of the issue, uh, there was that Disruption was also used so that there was no follow up from the Chaos Knight. And, uh, luckily for them, because of that force reset on the Shadow Demon, uh, they will have an easier time here for a little bit. Uh, of course, the Gyrocopter is still gaining up all of that mana back. Um, Uncontested clarity. No Firestorm. I'm kind of surprised that he just let the Gyrocopter go back to full mana. Uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, if we look at the bottom lane, right? If we compare CS, this, this Bristleback's having a free lane. Meanwhile, Case Knight has to literally fight for his life. So I'm again, I'm kind of... I'm kind of iffy about this situation. Crystal Maiden has absolutely... I w I've been looking, and he's done nothing at the moment, which is kind of the issue, right? Um, I guess the presence uh, could be something, but I don't think Bristleback really cares about this Crystal Maiden. I, I don't know about you, but uh, yeah. Um, this, this Beastmaster uh, is still definitely going to struggle. One thing I will say that is iffy uh, is this... Rubik so far, he actually had an opportunity to kill the Viper right there. Viper was walking under his tower, he had lift and he had Vapor ready, but uh, in the top lane, it's going to be a disruption onto himself. Shadow Demon trying to run himself down to safety. That missile, though, if you have to kill the missile, otherwise you're dead. Oh, what? no, it's not. It, Easy, it's what are you one. doing? He has a level 1 missile. He skilled Rocket Barrage first, so now he's going to get contested forward by the Underlord. Firestorm is off cooldown. Pressure and slow could have been a kill there, but Paradigm, again, holding on to that... Uh, holding on onto that Firestorm till marriage because he does not want to waste mana. Yeah, but easy could have chased easily for that kill. It was just two auto attacks under the tower. There's every chance that you get that kill and then you come out alive. So not really sure why he stopped diving. Lilo, however, very deep under this tower. Miracle at dawn, barely surviving. Still has the fairy fire. Windmaker is moving into intercept, but Lilo is very, very tanky. Still has it's a viper. Uh, Still has yeah, the, yeah. Um, it, it's a viper. Well, I don't really. Gyrocopter's coming here, but. Oh, Lilo is stuck in the trees! Oh, he's yeah. very, very smart oh. from him. He stopped the tangle. His allies are coming in. Uh, there is still a s Oh, disruption! Yeah. Saves him. Running out to safety, easy. Slightly faster. I want to say... No, he doesn't have boots. So Underlord is just going to run him down with one more auto attack. Commit to this, my boy. Commit to this. Yeah, he... Oh! Uh, Shadow Poison Pop will it. get him. It's fine. Uh, Chaos Knight actually rotates to try and get the Shadow Demon kill. They will get the trade. So support for support. 
Um, not the worst trade, all in all, right? But uh, in the meantime, you can see this Beastmaster and... Oh, actually, Gyrocopter got the Viper. What? Uh, there was no missile on that Viper. Viper died to a creep. 100%. Uh, Viper decided to suicide into the enemy tower. He didn't want to just... Uh... Right oh, okay, so anyway, it would have taken too much time. Uh, probably right, the makes, right move. All things considered, yeah, absolutely. Just reset the lane. You know, get your items back. You still have that advantage. Gy gyrocopter support, getting a free ward doesn't really change anything in the status quo. And in the meantime, in that entire fight, right, both uh, both uh, top and mid rotated to assist that. In the meantime, Bristleback just free farming. Meanwhile, your Beastmaster again still kind of suffering. 14 CS. I would really like this uh, Beastmaster to actually transition into the jungle when the lane is shoved in so hard, just to get a few creeps into that and experience, because he wants this roar as soon as possible. Uh, but unfortunately, this uh, this Bristleback is just not letting him. <laughs> no, no oh, creeps. Oh, falling CS. very low in this top lane. The disruption probably screwed him over there because there were no more stuns coming up from the two. And now Paradigm has to run himself down to safety. Potato Cat is here to save the day. Though they throw an ignite onto Pattern. Pattern should be fine. Very, very high on HP. Still has a 10 stick charges. Um, that disruption was extremely poor right there because both the stuns had already been used on the side of the dual lane on NTFN. So could have killed his ally with that, but. I th the problem, again, we're seeing the kind of problem, and I think it's I, I, I'm genuinely because of the skill build. I don't understand this two points in Rocket Barrage. Rocket Barrage got nerfed severely because it was too easy to run people down with. And the the kind of same problem, right, uh, is happening here. Rocket Barrage actually does very little in comparison to what it used to be. This missile has to be much better, right? This missile has to be a higher level, get more damage out, support uh, the support has to be, uh, um, well, proactive, and Rocket Barrage will not let you run down anything at this point in time. The higher damage on the missile means more harass. And you have a Crystal Maiden, right? You can spam that out, so you have to, uh, you have to deal that damage. It's definitely not going to help you run anyone down if you don't have boots, and, uh, this Jericop is pretty far <laughs> away from that. Yeah. He's, uh, 180 gold behind, uh... Ogre Magi and Paradigm just kind of staring him in the face, you know. Just dab all with these haters. Lilo, 7. Rubik, Miracle at Dawn, 7. Both of them feeling pretty okay about themselves. Uh, Viper has a bit more CS, but really it's about even in that mid lane. 40 gold a hit from each other, about the same level. So it'll be interesting to see when this Rubik wants to get moving. I assume that he's going to be the one moving before that Viper, just because of the hero that he is. We see a smoke from Windmaker, keeping up to this top lane while he's still smoked, and uh, they're going to pick their fight right here. Pattern is laying into the Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon might be a bit out of position. Pattern still has the Q. They have to know that Crystal Maiden is here. You need to go now. Okay, they're going to go right now. They control the bolt out onto the Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon still has a disruption. He's probably going to have to use it. He uses it right there, but uh, yeah, he's dead. He's going to die for that trade. Uh, Crystal Maiden will be fine. Um, and the thing there is that uh, Rocket Barrage, uh, Level 2, as you saw, uh, was shared with an entire creep wave, and you saw absolutely <laughs> dealt no damage. In fact, I, f I didn't realize Rocket Barrage was on until I heard the um, the noise. So, again, that's kind of the kind of the problem here, is that uh, obviously now he's level 4, so it doesn't really matter at this point, but I really do want to see that third point of that missile. Uh, Rocket Barrage, just earlier, isn't necessarily better. Uh, oh, missed CS there. Uh, but right now, Bristleback Still uncontested farm, and Viper is not too shabby himself. It, 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 although this Rubik did get a kill, right? You can clearly see the sort of CS problems they're having. Oh, top lane again. Underlord's gonna get jumped here. Firestorm, but it's not gonna be enough. It's gonna be a free kill once again. Uh, Ogre Magi won't be traded. Too tanky. And uh, it does feel like the Radiant supports seem a bit lost at this point of time. NTFN, you know. They don't have the best heroes for the job, but they're getting it done. They've been smoking up, they've been proactive. Not really the same thing from the Shadow Demon. The Shadow Demon, you know, this hero very, very dependent on zoning opponents out with that Shadow Poison. Uh, so far, we've been seeing disruptions, and uh, they're not the best disruptions either, so I'm not really sure what the plan is with this hero. Uh, I mean, you, you have to look at the net worth as well, right? If you see the net worths, and even the gold lead, in fact, you can clearly see that both cores on Inot are farming very fast. And the kind of the issue here is Chaos Knight won't be able to stand up to this Viper until later in the game. Gyrocopter will come in and dish in some harassment's missile back, but look at that missile. It did nothing. 
this Bristleback will continue farming here, and there's really nothing they can do about it unless they commit a few more uh, heroes to try and stop this Bristleback. But again, the risk there is that he'll get a few trades off, and it'll be all, all the more worth it for him. He even goes for this bouncer and feels invincible at this point. And he's kind of right, because that Frostbite did nothing, and that Crystal Maiden will just die here. Free kill for the Viper with a double damage rune. And he gets a lot of Atolls, and this is scary, right? The and uh, they're going to get the Gyrocopter as well. No TP on that guy, he's just dead. Yeah. Both supports out of position there. Um, I again, that's kind of the issue, right? There is, there's really nothing they can do to stand against this. Uh, the bottom lane did not do so well, and top lane draw e drew even, I would say, right? The, the Chaos Knight got his farm, the Underlord got his farm. So where is your victory coming from? Rubik? He has less CS than the Viper. And of course, that's because it's a Viper. Um, so, really, they're kind of depending on what kind of rotations the support will do once they're both six. Or uh, once at least Gyrocopter is six, which he is now. But again, you can see. Okay, we're going to on this Underlord in this top lane. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, he's going to get so his good. W off, but he's just kind of tanking a lot of damage. Really, not taking the most efficient path through the trees. There is going to be one more Crystal Nova in two seconds, but they're not going to die because Shisui is coming in, and now Shisui is just going to run down this Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight. He has the Town Portal Scroll if he has to. He probably doesn't. Please. Oh, he's getting run oh, down. Man, he's panicking. He's panicking. Use your Town Portal Scroll. You're fine. All right. Yeah. Bristleback, oh, he's gonna finally turn around. And you have to notice, he has no reality rift. He has maxed out Chaos Bolt and maxed out uh, Chaos Strike for the time being. And that's... I disagree with that. The one point in reality rift is very good. It helps you juke, right? It helps you chase down. I mean, if he had reality rift there, Underlord would have certainly died. I don't think any extra points in Chaos Bolt right now is worth it. Until you once once you get that talent or you're later in the game and you have to max it out. He does go Midas, which allows him to start catching up. He is the highest net worth on uh on NTFN's side. So it there it will be their bastion of hope here because again, Rubik mid, again it's not uncommon, but what does he steal to turn fights here? What does he do? Uh no real idea. Um, uh, bloodlust. I mean, bloodlust is good. It's a good ability, but uh, it's nothing game changing. Real. Uh, in fact, um, perhaps dark rift. Once underlord gets it, which unfortunately he doesn't have yet. Firestorm is okay. Okay. And that's kind of kind of the issue, right? Is that this Rubik will not scale as hard as this as this viper is, and this viper is right now. Right now has a rod of Atos. In fact, he skipped boots for this, which is uh, which is kind of in kind of interesting. So I'm kind mm, of looking catch forward to how this to CM out of position. I want to say, yeah, they do. Uh, they Atos. Atos. Just on him, easy kill onto this Crystal Maiden. Nothing she can do. Just slowly wait to die. Miracle at Dawn though, he's gonna try to turn something and now wrapping in, that's gonna be a gyro out, that's a very good one, landing on two heroes. Lilo is tanking in the middle of all of this though, that sustained from that magic life steal, finally he goes down, but he does take out two in return. Shisui now, big and large and in charge, going down this gyrocopter, yep, gyrocopter did, Chaos Knight did, uh, Shadow Demon? Shadow Demon, Shadow Demon. Is he, is not gonna chase. Awesome. He doesn't chase for it, Rubik is, unfortunately, again, he's a mid laner, just bear that in mind. But unfortunately, four go down in trade of two. The, yes, the Viper does go down, but that's a lot of kills to the Bristleback. And this Bristleback's already really so, really beefy, right? And um, in in a lot of cases, I wouldn't uh, necessarily say that Ruby can really take down this Bristleback. It's going to be all up to this Chaos Knight trying to push this advantage against Bristleback. Obviously, Gyrocopter doesn't scale well against, Gyro uh, and, and against Bristleback either if he doesn't have any farm. And he's going Urn because, again, he's a support. And they can't really afford to roll, roll transition here because they don't have the net worth for it, and they've sacrificed a ton of CS uh, for for this case tonight to, to prevail. And this flex pick Jarakov doesn't feel very strong at the moment, because uh, just the Bristleback just runs him down. And with no... Milo no might be in a bit of trouble in this top lane. There is a rocket being thrown out of him, but he is so tanky, and his team is running in to secure him. Uh, Oh, now CK is the one out of position, the Atos is going to be thrown out onto him, nowhere to run, this Gyro Cop ulti however, once again very well placed onto 3 heroes, perhaps 4, and now Chaos Knight, he's going to die, but Ogre Magi, everyone on the side of Radiant, very very low, Windmaker drops the ultimate, and uh, Miracle at Dawn does secure kill onto Potato Cat, that disruption going to be used to try and buy ZSX a bit of time, but a bit of time is not enough, Miracle at Dawn gets a double kill. The rocket is out onto Bristleback. You're gonna try to go on him, which is uh, seems a bit ambitious here. Yeah. Right now. 
Okay, it's gonna be trade two for one, but that one is a KS Knight. And I, again, that, well, that was your most farmed hero at the moment. Now it's Rubik, gets that Aether Lens. So I'm kind of interested to see where he goes. Obviously, he's doing quite a, much, uh, quite a lot of burst damage. So it's gonna be quite interesting to see how that will do. Um, another thing to note here, oh, Ogre Magic's gonna get jumped on here, TP into the mid lane, might have TP to his death, it will be. That's a lot of burst damage from the uh, Rubik at the moment. Uh, finally, un uh, Rubik unstoppable actually at this point in time. So, currently taking the reins, now currently higher net worth than the, uh, than the, um, the Viper. So, actually more chase here, Viper, currently 1v3 in this mid lane, gets roared into a burst, and another kill going to the Rubik, and this Viper, uh, kind of, a few misplays actually causing him to drop from that second net worth uh, position now in favor of Rubik and Rubik getting that blink dagger as soon as possible is kind of really what they want. That Underlord moving towards that pipe, he's just a recipe away from it. Uh, Viper going to pick up the mech as well, so they're going to have two big teamfight defensive items on the side of Radiant, and uh, I think that is the time to push. The question is, can you really push safely into this Gyrocopter and this Rubik? They do put out a lot of bursts so far, they've been repelled by it, but uh, only execution will tell. Viper going to TP in like that? Mm, not really the best move I would say when you just see uh, two supports standing right there but yeah I think I think the, I think the idea there is that the Viper will be perfectly fine against that Crystal Maiden and Gyrocopter but I, but he didn't know that the Beastmaster was there so that could have potentially turned really bad obviously Roar is still on cooldown but of, again he might have not known that he charges forward he gets the roots on the Maiden but he's gonna leave that alone understanding Gyrocopter is still there he sees the Beastmaster as well so it's not gonna chase and all this time while this is happening, Pattern and Miracle at Dawn are just wailing into this T1 tower. There's going to be a TP in from this Bristleback. He wants to protect his tower. Makes it out. And uh, they're just going to be okay. Miracle at Dawn just going to TP back up to top. Where he's, uh, he has the Blink Dagger and the Aether Lance now. He's going to try to make something happen. Four of his allies up in this top lane. Lilo, Lilo trying to go onto this Gyrocopter. Big mistake because everyone here is just going to throw their ult onto you. Pattern going to be picked up in the bot lane. So core for core. And uh, yeah. most likely tower for tower. Uh, unfortunately, there's no tower bottom. They've already taken it, so that won't be a tower for tower. That should be a core for a tower here. Uh, they waste time with the glyph, um, and that's kind of a problem here. You, you can't really get your case knight be caught out. He's really not really can't afford to get caught out like that. He is uh, going to be their late game. He's going to be their uh, their main damage, I would say, against the Bristleback uh, eventually. Right, Rubik is doing quite a lot, so I'm not going to count him out, especially if he gets a uh, net worth lead, which he does have over the Viper, so... Uh, uh, Sapphire, be... remember when you said that you don't think it's going to be tower for tower? Oh, well, now it's going to be 2-2 tower. Are you sure tower it's not going to be tower for tower? Well, now it is going to be tower for tower, okay. <laughs> I didn't mm. see. I, it looks like they will be pushing for a tier two for tier two trade here. Uh, but reality rift, actually a uh, dark rift rather, <laughs> is going to be teleporting them down bottom lane, and it will be a tower for tower. Tier two uh, tower will not fall. Um, and yeah, that that I mean, <laughs> apparently it was a trade. Case Knight again, so far out here, uh, it's so dangerous. Obviously, you saw them all top. So I guess you could, uh, it, it was it was kind of okay to play that risky, um, but him dying uh, is just... It was perfectly safe because uh, he had the ward on that high ground watching them. Oh right, he has that ward, yeah. absolutely. So okay. he knows what he's doing, presumably. Uh, he's moving towards that Manta style, already has the Yasha on the courier, I want to say. Yes, he does. Uh, the smoke and the ward's coming as well, so Dyer might want to make a move, or really, they just want to take this T1 tower. I don't think Raiden is going to defend this with any real enthusiasm, because uh, that tower is dangerously low. Well, I mean, I Bristleback that, has a lot of enthusiasm. There. Yeah, Bristleback really wants this. He's very enthusiastic about this bottom t uh, tower. Uh, obviously, the bottom, t uh, the Raiden bottom tower is kind of one of the least favorable uh, towers to take. Um, especially with priority. Uh, Chaos Knight gonna be gonna throwing get... out his ulti right there. He gets the rift onto this Bristleback, but he's doing no damage whatsoever. Potato Cat, however, not so lucky. And now Bristleback, you can tank, but not everyone. And uh, he's dealing a lot of damage oh, though, he's with everyone. Kills. And he now everyone on the side of them dies while you go. NTFN, you bit it off more than you can chew at this point. Pattern juking through the trees, but juking through the trees, not in time. 
Okay, I mean, you, you say he's he's not gonna tank everyone, but he literally just tanked everyone. Pipe and Crimson Guard already completed. Uh, sorry, Hood of Defiance and Crimson Guard already completed for this Bristleback. So he is he's I wouldn't say invulnerable, right? Because they got very close. But the problem here is that Shadow Demon is not on their team, and Rubik is gonna have to steal that this uh, that um. Sorry, Rubik has to steal that uh, Demonic Purge to to get rid of that Bristleback passive. Uh, to deal with that, uh, well, well, said Bristleback. So, it's kind of hard. It, 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 it it's doesn't really actually, hard. It, it doesn't actually do that until you get the agony, because the Oh, the right, passive. the Purge? Yeah. Or the, the Break? Yes. Oh, okay, well then. Well, again, it is Rubik, right? So once he gets that Ags, which he probably will faster than the Shadow Demon, uh, it will make Demonic Purge much better, but yeah, as you say, at the moment, their problem is this Bristleback, and you saw, he got he got hit in the face with an entire Crystal Maiden ulti, and still lived. And in fact, that Quill Spray uh, passive, or the Bristleback passive just kind of killed everybody around him. So, I'm kind of looking at what they could potentially do about that. Obviously, they could just ignore Bristleback at this point in time, kill everyone around him, and then leave. Uh, but e even after... Three to four stacks. The support uh, on the side of NTFN uh, have problems, so I'm not quite sure what they really have uh, going into this high ground push eventually, because um, this is an uncontested Aegis. Completely uncontested. Um, they probably knew that was happening, considering that no heroes are showing themselves, but mm -hmm. didn't think that they could take that fight. And uh, in exchange, they're going to get this T1 tower bot. It's something. Not a very big something, but it is something. Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. They're going to they... have to run around the map for quite a long while, I, I would say, because this Chaos Knight doesn't have the items to start fighting, and uh, yeah. pretty much no one does on the side of Dyer. You're very ah. reliant on this uh, Beastmaster role at this point in time to just get pick off and delay the game, but even then, he doesn't have the items to do that. You know, he has a pipe. He isn't Vladimir's offering, it's... He doesn't have a Blink Dagger, so he can't really catch anyone by themselves, and but, uh, and Beastmaster has been behind for quite some time, so... Again, he won't be able to solo pick off anybody. I, I agree with you, absolutely. They probably should get pickoffs here, here and there. Even though Rubik is the highest net worth on their team, it doesn't feel like he's doing enough, and that's not inherently because of the player's fault, it's because it's a Rubik against a Bristleback. It's not gonna work out very well, and... Uh, I don't really see, uh, I don't really see, uh, something they can get from having a team fight. And as we can see, they're split pushing with both their core heroes here. I mean, except for the Beastmaster, of course, who is, uh, positioning behind this tier 2 tower. Um, not quite sure, uh, what they're about to do. I guess they're just trying to, uh, make sure that they clear the wave as soon as it, uh, as, as soon as the tower falls, but... Uh, they do get that tier 2 bottom first, so that's good money into their uh, pocket. There's going to be a smoke up from the side of NTFN. They want to get something done here, but uh, I'm not, they're not going to leave anyone behind. They're just going to push up together, and uh, when they're ready, they will just carefully back off together. So, very, very disciplined from the side of Ayunat right here. Uh, if you want to cut someone <laughs> off, now would be the time. They don't see that. Oh, they do. They do see that because they have the Observer Water right there. They see everything, they get a lift out onto this Ogre Magi, Potato Cat a bit low, ZSX gonna fall? Yeah, he disrupts the opponent, but uh, regardless of who he disrupted, he was dying there. Uh, Ogre Magi? No, he doesn't get out alive, I don't think, even with the Crimson Guard. Oh, he is tanky okay, enough that yeah. it distracts everyone from Shisui, though. Shisui probably got to run out of safety, no, he wants to take this fight. And uh, why not, really? Lots of the damage on cooldown on the side of Dyer, so Shisui gonna feel large and in charge right here, just tanking everyone good throughout those close sprays, and Lilo, he still has that Aegis, still has the Guardian Grease. Gonna run down the Soma here. Soma gonna have to throw out the roll. Do they have a cancel for that? No, they do not. And that was a very, very heads up play from that Beastmaster. They just roar and TP out. Uh, uh well, now, oh? now Pattern has to try to TP out. And he probably can. He can uh, not with the Atos and uh, gets out to safety, running up to the high ground. Good presence of mind there to realize that the Viper was in range of the Atos. Mm, uh, an interesting thing to note in that fight, right, is that they did get two pickoffs, but it was on both supports. No core kill, which means these cores are still farming up. And as we saw there, right, the Rubik uh, stole, actually, I was going to mention this, Rubik stole Firestorm, which is actually one of the better abilities to steal against this Bristleback. Um, and it, it clearly did quite a decent chunk of his HP, but at this point, all he can do is buy time. 
um, trying to push here. Uh, Nether Toxin is also probably a good pickup uh, if he can get it. Shisui oh. does not care. The gyrocopter out is going to be thrown out now. Chaos Knight already trying to lay into Lilo. Lilo going to get disrupted in the last second. There is an Aegis onto Immortal anyway, so Lilo probably not going to. Oh, the Dark Rift was cancelled from the side of Paradigm. So Paradigm does not want to go out because he sees blood. He smells blood in the water. Gyro is just going to die to all the hail. And the uh, Windmaker follows as well. Beastmaster follows as well. Yeah, it looks like this is going to be a very, very easy team fight win. And uh, definitely one set of racks for the side of Raid. And she's like falling extremely low, however. Probably don't want to stand inside that Firestorm. Thought it was Underlords for a second. The, the thing... Gone. The thing you have to look oh, at there. Miracle at Dawn, you're playing a bit risky here. Re Sea Shrake's just gonna lay into you. And uh, the best pick in the game. Windmaker, <laughs> now he's the one in trouble. Just going to try to do that. Not gonna work against this Viper. Viper's 1.8k HP. Windmaker juking through the trees. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's no escape there. I, I, uh, this, this last pick, Rubik, he's doing his best, man. He has to, he has to steal another Toxin or Firestorm, but. His damage output is just not enough. This Bristleback is so far ahead, gets a harder to rask. And you saw in that fight, they committed for the Viper, who had an Aegis, because they couldn't kill the Bristleback. And after all the committal was done, Phantasm was down, Reality Rift was down, there was no Master Style still available. Uh, finally gets that now, but he, this is untouchable. Nether Toxin is finally on him, but he's not taking damage. Crimson Guard is doing enough that he doesn't need that Bristleback passive at this point. He does a Nether Toxin, so maybe that will change this fight here. Viper gonna get chased down. Unfortunately, the roots just so much here. Beastmaster gonna fall here. Rubik might try to get this harass here, but gonna walk too far up. Gonna get rooted down, called down. Gonna try and trade for something. Chase that actually reality rips into the Viper, but Viper's so tanky with that Nether Toxin skin and, or sorry, corrosive skin. Rocket, not enough, and this Bristleback is going to run down this Jarkov, but there's no way he's surviving this. This Bristleback can literally stand in this fountain for five years, and this Jarkov will die eventually. Um, He is calm as still water, this uh, Shisui. He lives up to his name. We have the Absolutely. heart and everything, just tanking these towers, and, and uh, it looks like it's just going to be a very, very anti climactic and NTFN. Nothing yeah, they can do. Crystal Maiden just going to watch everything. Throw out a Q, maybe. Yep, there you go. The lead and on their uh, cores is too significant. There, there's really nothing they can do. Jar uh, the Viper has a Greaves already. That's why it took. It, it, that's why KS9 couldn't kill him. He got extra 15 armor from just being low HP. And this Crystal Maiden going to overextend here against Rod of Atos. And again, Rubik, right? Uh, the, 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 pl the player did great. He, in fact, did the best on his team uh, just by in comparison. The KS Knight, unfortunately, unable to do as much. Again, his lane, uh, I did disagree with sacking his lane. I don't. And that will be game one. And uh, GG is called... I know, they take game one pretty convincingly, I want to see. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Bristleback carry that so hard. Well, there was some really of the, nothing also come do. down to the drafting, so um, mm -hmm. maybe if their drafts right. are a little closer, it might feel bit better but uh yeah. that was just game one of a two game series guys so we might hit into game two in a few minutes uh i've been seeing quite a bit of flame on us so uh, i'm a bit yeah, more to there, there's, 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 <laughs> there's a little bit of flame saying rubik was the best pick here but as you can clearly see the he did the best but that doesn't mean it's the best pick Ru yes rubik won or broke even in fact in the mid game or rather in the mid lane Right, but you can clearly see what because, because they didn't just give that KS9 farm, they just there was nothing they could do. KS9, I'm sorry, Rubik does not scale very well in the Russell back, even if he gets another toxin. Another toxin, if he's still walking under toxin, he should have been at the point, and that's all I'm gonna say.
just got a rocket boost. And that's kind of, kind of the issue. Kind of the issue indeed. Uh, hopefully they pick themselves up in this game too. Uh, there were some good things to see in NTF's rotations in the early game. I did feel that they, you know, they took initiative, they did stuff done, they got stuff done, even though they didn't have the best sort of uh, duel. But uh, just don't flame them. Uh, I, I don't think I was really flaming them. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I sounded a bit too aggressive there, Twitch chat. I'm sorry. Um, uh, yeah. Unbiased casting, my dude. Unbiased. Um, <laughs> uh, so it looks like second game is underway fairly soon. I'm not quite sure. We're waiting on the admins to let us know what is happening. Um, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. We'll uh, oh, the lobby is up, by the way, so we should be getting into that. Uh, Oh, it is uh, Evan who is coaching uh, INUT or NTF. Not really sure which one it is, but... <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, while we're waiting for the game to start, let's just uh, shoot the shit. Hmm. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Watch any good enemies recently? <laughs> I was going to say, I'm not oh. going to lie, though. I'm sure there's a bunch of haters, but uh, Attack on Titan, right? I'm not going to say I was there since day one, but I was there since day Dude, one. Your, your audio just went from, like, normal to, like, nothing. Did you? Did it? Hello, oh, testing no, no, one, two, three. No, no, no. Sorry, that, that was because I was fiddling with my. I oh, hate okay. my new microphone. Sorry, I hate my new microphone. <laughs> I, I was. I was gonna say. Jesus, what well, this fucking hits that? Okay, um, but anyway. Mm, blah, yeah, blah, blah, that. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I was. I, I was gonna say AOT. You know, Attack on Titan again. Um, I've. Uh, I'm gonna say the final season is gonna be so good, man. I, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and aside from that, so this is this is proof, ladies and gentlemen, that the. Uh, ATTL continues to shit taste an enemy, but hey, absolutely. Whoa, hold up! I bet I bet you fucking watch Fire Force, don't you? Anyways, I, I, uh... <laughs> you think I watch enemy? Do you think I'm a fucking weave or some shit? Yes. What gave you that impression? I don't know. <laughs> oh, how could you be so dude? Uh, feels 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 weird, man. Feels right, man. Uh, anyways, um. But yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what they change up in the drafts. Uh, if I if I recall, their bans were quite laning phase oriented. Uh, Undying was banned, I believe. Uh, Earthshaker was banned, obviously. I mean, Earthshaker and Morphling is <laughs> just a disgusting composition. Um, it's gonna be quite interesting uh, how they will go about it. So something that I like to do in the lobby is a uh, display picture analysis. Uh, so let's oh take a look my at, uh, god! Some of the more interesting display pictures. We have a quilava with a uh, a bunch of you know those small things. So what did you call? What is the junior of quilava? Cynicals, uh, right? Quilava a bunch yeah. of cynicals, um on Windmaker. So that's pretty cute. Uh, Miracle at dawn, some generic white lady. I'm sure a songwriter or an actress of some kind. The uh, pattern, you know, with the classic question yeah. mark. Uh, easy with the uh, straight out of hentai picture and the reading. yeah. I think that's uh, police ready right there. Um, not not uh, sure. That's a blunder uh, right there. Uh, and Basoma has a pretty aesthetic picture as uh, one of those fuzzy headlights in the rain. Just kind of nice and warm, nice and chill. Paradigm, paradigm with the the scream. Uh, so paradigm. Uh, probably screaming about what happened in the last game. Even though they won, uh, this way with <laughs> some sort of mangekyo is that it? Is that the term? Some anime thing? Man Naruto? Mangekyo, mangekyo. Does anybody believe it, motherfuckers? Uh, potato yeah, cat that, with a uh, kantai collection it. or whatever ship game. Well, what are the ship games? Uh, Azure Lane kantai collection. There's like a bunch more. I don't fucking remember, dude. I'm pretty sure that's from Azure Lane, though. All right, uh, but uh, <laughs> there's a panda. I mean. I was gonna say I I really like this panda. Also, someone has some good taste in fucking art. Look at that, it's a screaming what? painting, paradigm. That's a screaming I painting. I literally just said it. You oh, motherfucker! Shit. I didn't even know. I didn't hear you, dude. Motherfucker, <laughs> dude! I will put my 
A in your B. <laughs> oh shit! Why does ZS- ZSX have zero? Oh, well, oh, that's okay. I thought that was games, but no, that's MVPs. Um, I was gonna say. Okay, so, um, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna head into game two right now. So, uh, thanks very much for tuning in, guys. Uh, we'll try to do our best this game as well. So, uh, do keep sending us that feedback. We're always taking it in on the board. But in any case, welcome back to game two of this, uh, series. It's gonna be no time for name up against Samsung Galaxy S Nut. So, NTFN versus INUT. INUT took the first game pretty convincingly off the back of a bristle back. Uh, just ran out of nothing they could do. And uh, on the side of NTFN, you know, lots of things to improve on. They did feel like, uh, uh, it did feel like their draft was a little bit stunted. They're going to take out the bristle back straight away. Don't want to be facing up that hero. Samsung Galaxy S not going to take out that Phoenix. Phoenix just a, a nice hero to go all around against. Uh, lots of damage coming up from that Phoenix and lots of team fight control. So, I just don't want to deal with that. Bag of worms. I just find it really funny when something is banned instantly because previous game it just rolled them over. I mean, honestly, Bristleback is a solid hero, and it was a solid hero for uh, that game in particular. Uh, so unfortunately, they will have to cost the ban there if they really don't want to face that again. I mean, it's it's not. It never feels good to lose the same thing twice. So I can kind of understand that. Um, but that kind of leaves room for Ina to ban the exact same two bands they did previously which is phoenix undying uh clearly have a game plan for uh for this matchup or just hate phoenix and undying i mean undying obviously a destructive laner phoenix uh, during fights just com- kind of disrupt what the carries really want to do so it's not really uh it's not really a problem it's probably also something to do with the way the NTF, uh, the NTFN cores played in the last game. Uh, they were just, you know, they go on. Sorry, what am I saying? Uh, it's also something about the way the Inut players tend to play inside fights. Uh, you notice that they're always going on one target and then they just take it down slowly, 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 just whittle away at the opponent with their cores. And uh, so, when you're doing that against a Phoenix and then I'm dying, you know, you have to break up the fight too much. Your team gets split up a bit. So don't really want to do that if you are feeling, you know, comfortable with your carry skills, right? You just want to slowly edge out that game. So they don't want to get any X factors into the game. So uh, one of those X factors that they don't want to go up against is that Spudge. So I do feel that s uh think that they're comfortably ahead in this game. They are confident heading into this game. They just want to, you know, clear it out. Just sheer superiority. So NCFN, can they turn that? They take out that Night Stalker, so that is uh, a known quantity, right? It just comes into fights, just silences everybody like a big... Oh, Shadow Shaman. Okay, this is a hero that I really like. Um, Gives you a bit of everything, gives you a lot of push as well for support. And uh, it's a solid laner. Um, used to be a lot better than he is now, but he still is pretty decent. And uh, s not. they know what's on the table now. I really like the Shadow Shaman pickup, actually, if I'm being honest. It it doesn't mean that you're going to go for an all-in push strat. In fact, Shadow Shaman does perfectly fine in a composition that wants to go late game because of those Serpent Wards scaling uh, with those new talents. I mean, well, not new anymore, but the uh, 25 talents, the Aghanim Scepter, right? He scales perfectly fine into the late game, so he doesn't really reveal anything about the composition. And uh, The same with Jakiro, ironically enough, right? Jakiro does building damage quite significantly and both teams at the moment have uh, their ways of pushing um and i wanted to highlight uh that inut really loves their laning phase you can clearly see from their first three bands that they absolutely love to win their lanes um and then transition that into a victory and uh obviously i can understand that you know uh, winning the laning phase does mean you secure uh your mid game uh, much easier than the enemies uh meanwhile inut a much much more looking forward into the game or, or perhaps just specific strategies that are being banned out. Uh, obviously, Earthshaker sort of nullifies the Morphling Earthshaker combo. Uh, and, uh, well, Bristleback from the last game, of course. You don't have damage with these two supports. Once again, we're going to see this uh, sort of slow, whittling, just claw them out duel from this Inut. And uh, Jakiro and Ogre Magi, uh, it's not the Shadow Demon, it doesn't have the same defensive presence, but. It has the same oppressiveness in the lane, I want to say. Uh, Ogre Magi, you know, the same old Ogre Magi from last game, just hit people and uh, fall hit, you know. But Shadow Shaman is one of those heroes that can deal with that aggression pretty well because uh, of all the CC. And of course, with that Ever Shock, he's actually pretty painful to try to go one one on one against. And uh, NTFN, yeah. they I, mm. can pick anything that they like now. 
Yeah, the 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 thing I I like about the Shadow Shaman opening pick better is that um, unlike Crystal Maiden, right, it will not get run down. It does have a better better laning phase, as you mentioned, uh, higher base damage, of course. Um, it will be able to trade uh, very well, and if they want to go two one two with their lanings, of course, that is uh, that is that is uh, possible now, or at least much more possible now uh, than last game, because again. Uh, with Crystal Maiden and Jarcopter as your two supports, you don't really have that, uh, defensive, uh, defensive capability, uh, aside from Crystal Nova Slow and Frost by, but, uh, that, those two spells don't really, uh, really hold back aggression, especially if, uh, if you're being pressured very hard with, uh, Underlord and such. And, uh, Two spells that definitely hold back aggression. You're going to see the Shadow Shaman shackle into the arrow combo, most likely this game. At some point, you know it's going to be coming because the Shadow Shaman and Mirana are going to be the pickups for NTFN. Of course, we don't know where this Mirana is going to go. It could go as a core, it could go as a support, but uh, I'm leaning towards it being a core, and I really like core Mirana up against the uh, tanky supports like Jakiro and Ogre Magi because uh, these supports, they contribute a little bit less in terms of lockdown, so... Uh, a, a speedy hero like Mirana can just absolutely go to town on them, uh, hit them with an arrow, and suddenly they, they disappear, you know? Because what good is 1,000 HP? What good is 1,200 HP, right, when you're stunned for five seconds? But, um, you know, that's just a possibility. Might happen, might not. As not, uh, mm. don't want the possibility of dealing with the Chaos Knight. And the NTFN, they're going to go against, the, they're going to take out that Naga as well. So running a bit low on reserve time now, NTFN, they have to make their decisions fast and in a hurry. Mm -hmm. I the the second Naga ban in a row for them, so I'm kind of thinking that the enemy core. I believe it was uh who played Bursa back. Um, it was I believe Shisui. Uh, Shisui, right? So so Shisui might be an amazing Naga player, and that's why they're respect banning that, or perhaps they just really don't want to deal with a Naga. Um, the thing that I want to point out as well is that uh, this Marana is pretty much the same as the Jarcopter last. Last game, right? Where it's a flex pick, it can go anywhere, and uh, unlike the gyrocopter, it can, it's okay in every aspect, no matter where you put it. So it it's gonna be much more consistent, no matter where you put it, which is which is what I like about it. Um, and obviously, uh, I not banning the Chaos Knight um, over in favor of their previous ban, uh, Face Void. Of course, they still ban him, uh, and they pick Tiny Mid. Um, so a lot of illusions here is getting banned out. Uh, and Alchemist is still in the pool. I, 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 I'm kind of hoping that someone plays Alchemist here. Kind of, but not really. Because it's going to be a really, really farm-heavy game uh, in that scenario. So we're going to be seeing what they really want uh, for their third pick. It potentially may be the offlane. Um, it is the offlane. Or the support. You know, we never know. This is, this is, uh, this is quite a lot of flex in one team. Uh, the Marana and Sand King uh, are... Um, juxtaposable in that in that case. Um, so and... I just uh, took a look at some homework, and uh, apparently none of the Inat players play Naga Sire and all that much. So this is really just one of those picks that they don't want to go up against, or maybe it's something that they revealed in a scrim up against Inat. I'm not really sure, but uh, mm, does cast a bit of questions on that? Naga Siren, but they're going to pick up the Shadow Demon this time, so that's going to be a core Ogre Magi or a core Jakiro, depending on what I don't want to do here. Uh, that's definitely a, it, not a core Shadow Demon, I want to say. It's, it, not a it's, core, it's a core Ogre. Uh, it's going to be a core Ogre Magi offlane, um, most likely, with the Hand of Midas. Um, as everyone knows, right, Hand of Midas uh, works on his ulti, so you can get that payoff faster, get those items faster. And this, this means their last pick will probably be their main carry. I mean, Tiny can do that. But I'm sure Tiny's gonna go Ags, right? Gonna go Ags, she's gonna toss some trees, kill like a random Shadow Shaman while in the middle of the team fight. Um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good fun to just, uh, see those trees getting tossed. Um, but of course, they're gonna be relying on that last pick. I I'm quite certain it's gonna be something, uh, something very solid. I'm kind of thinking along the lines of, uh, and Ermisper gets picked up here. I'm kind of thinking along the lines of, um, I wouldn't be surprised. If it's something like a Spectre, I know that's a bit cheesy, but Spectre would be really nice here. With Disruption Save, Ice Path, Tiny comp uh, tiny sort of to stall them out. Ember Spirit uh, versus Tiny matchup, 
Uh, I'm not actually quite sure how that lane goes. I haven't seen it enough in this patch uh, to really determine uh, how that lane will go. Ember Spirit versus Tiny? Yeah, Ember Spirit um, versus Tiny. So Ember Spirit versus Tiny is one of those interesting lanes where the Ember Spirit is actually in a lot of danger of dying, but that solely goes down to his positioning because the moment he steps out of position, the Tiny is just going to throw you into your tower and then you're pretty much dead. Um, your Slide of Fist is useful, sure. Your Chains are useful, sure. But as a whole, Tiny really shouldn't be dying, and uh, but Ember Spirit definitely can die. Um, but even with that being said, I would say it's an even matchup because for you to die as an Ember Spirit versus Tiny, you have to be out of position or the Tiny has to get a rune. Um, the rune being you know more forgivable than the other one. But uh, anyway, that's just a mid lane matchup in a nutshell. Uh, I was going to talk about that Mirana hero because uh, I was taking a look at the stats of these two mid laners, uh, Miracle at Dawn and... Uh, uh, please don't use... It was, it was... Lilo. Lilo, Lilo. Yeah. yeah Lilo. So I was taking a look at the stats of Lilo and uh, Miracle at Dawn, and both of them are actually very, very avid Mirana players. Um, Miracle at Dawn, oh. 300 games on the hero. Lilo, 60 plus percent win rate, I want to say. So at first, I thought that it might have been a battle over that hero. They just wanted to, you know, flex it around. But mm. in any case, uh, it is going to be a support Mirana, I want to say. And then the last pick is going to be No Time for Names. Uh, position 4. Um, what kind of position 4 do you think you're going to pick up? Do you just want more damage at this point? Do you want uh, more lockdown? Do for, you want to N stay? for NTFN? I mean, yeah. uh, once again, right, this Moran is a flex pick. Previously, uh, they again went in order of their core picks 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this last pick was a core, if I'm being honest, because previously they kind of did the same thing and they have 12 seconds to kind of decide if this Morana is a core or not. Um, but if I could suggest a last pick here. Uh, perhaps, and we'll start his band. I was gonna say, um, Puck, offlane. That is a safe lane of his great mid Murata. No, the Puck's yeah. very elusive this game. The only catch yeah. that the uh, Asnot really has is this tiny with the blink. And uh, if you can just juke him out, you're gonna mm. have free time on this Puck. But it also means that we don't know which one of these is gonna be the mid laner because. Position 4 Puck, even position 5 Puck has been rising in popularity these days. And uh, of course, Puck can be played in the 3 and 2 roles as well. So no time for name. They really, really, really want the element of surprise here. And uh, just just a solid all-round teamfight lineup. You know, does pick off decently well, does pushing decently well, does everything pretty well. So um, it'll be interesting to see what uh, Aina decides to go for here. Um, I know you mentioned the Spectre earlier. The risk of the Spectre is that you're going to die a lot to this aggression of the Shadow Shaman and the Mirana, if that is their support combo. But beyond that... Uh, now that he's backed up by that Shadow Demon and the Ogre Magi, it 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 is a very very solid Spectre game once you yeah. hit that mid game stride. Yeah, the Shadow Demon pick I believe was to uh, deal with this Marana and uh, Sand King, just disrupt the target. Yeah, as I called it, it's a Spectre. There's just so much defensive capabilities with the Jakiro and the Shadow Demon that uh, this Spectre is just the perfect pick for them. Right, it's gonna carry them into the late game. Puck cannot stand into this. I, none of their heroes can stand into this. I, Ember Spirit can if he gets far ahead enough, but in an even game, this Spectre will potentially triumph, uh, especially uh, going into that late game. And uh, Lilo is going to end up you know, being the face of this Ainat team, because if Lilo gets a good game, if he gets to play this pivot that uh, Ainat can play around, suddenly this whole Ainat team, you know, gains so many more dimensions, right? Suddenly you're going on Shisui, and then two seconds later, Lilo just destroys you with this avalanche combo. Or, you know, you're trying to, you know, maybe Shisui is behind at 10 minutes, but Lilo is not, and then Lilo suddenly gets four kills in a row with this Blink Dagger. Anything can happen when this Tiny is on that field. And that's why I think Tiny is so important to this Ainat team. And uh, if you're NTFN, you shut down this Tiny. You don't shut down the Spectre. You shut down this Tiny. Yeah, you shut down everything around the Spectre. Therefore, the Spectre doesn't have a team to stand around. And then uh, that's sort of the idea, the same idea with the Alchemist, uh, against an Alchemist, right? You shut down everyone around him so that once the Spectre comes out to play, he's like, hey guys, time to fight. His team dies around him. And you just sort of, you just 5v1 him. Um, and that's kind of no, the yeah, plan. I'm, I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure you shut down the, the, the alchemist suit. I'm, I'm pretty sure you don't get the alchemist run rampant. Well, well if you if you <laughs> if you notice, in, if you notice in ESL one actually, yeah. uh, what Gambit did to deal with the alchemist against Alliance was to kill off the enemy, uh, the the mid laner, um, which was I believe Limp. Um, who? Yes, Limp. Yeah. So they 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 eliminated everything around the alchemist so that the alchemist didn't have a good game and that's that's sort of the i i think the same idea for this one is that 
Spectre having a decent game is not as good as having a bad game with literally everybody else. And that's going to be something I'm going to be looking forward to seeing how NTFN has to operate because they cannot afford to lose the early game. They really can't. Yeah. So the good thing about the supports on the die side is that uh, they're pretty okay with being poor. You know, Ogre Magi and Shadow Demon are pretty much always at the bottom of the net worth list no matter what game you're watching. But anyway, um, welcome back to game two. Which team did you introduce the last time, Blue Sapphire? I was NTFN. Would you like me to do the same thing? Uh, No, you're going to go with Aina this time. Oh, okay. <laughs> so for Inut, we have uh, Shisui on the Spectre. Once again, our number one position, a very hard one. Uh, Potato Cat on the Jakiro. Uh, Lilo or Lilo on the Tiny. We have ZSX on the Shadow Demon and Paradigm on the Ogre Magi. Yeah, and on the side of NTFN, you have Windmaker on this Shadow Shaman. You've got the one and only Miracle at Dawn on this Puck, Pattern on this Ember Spirit, Easy on this Mirana, and last but not least, Soma on this Sand King. And uh, the combo here is actually not going to be Arrow into Shadow Shaman. Very odd. Um, I assume that Mirana's going to make her way down at some point, so definitely not the way this lane is going to stay. But you do want to put some pressure onto the Spectre in between your rotations to mid. Um, Did very well last game uh, on his Rubik, the Miracle at Dawn, but this game, he wants to have more of an impact. Potato cannot dodges that arrow. Soma going to throw out that stun. It does mean that he doesn't have the caustic finale for the laning stage, which might be a bit of a loss. Potato cat taking quite a bit of harass here, but in any case, it's just going to be two for two. We're away we go, right? And so Puck is the mid lane, right? So he's going to be looking to set up, but it's against a tiny. And uh, tiny inherently, uh, actually no, because of the damage buffs onto Puck, he she. She will, or it will, have a better time than previously. Uh, but at this point, uh, it's, we're gonna, I mean, we're clearly going to be seeing because this is going to be a, a more skill-oriented matchup than anything at this point, right? With a puck, anything can happen. In the meanwhile, on the top side, I am really surprised that he really skilled Burrow Strike just to get that road. It will, it will cause some problems for his laning stage. Spectre will get something. Uh, at yeah, all times, it's gonna here. bite him in the ass because the other thing is that Bro <laughs> Strike at level one is not long enough to combo into that arrow. So, uh, I don't know. It, it seems once again that uh, uh, skill all that really so run. much. I think it just really wanted to really wanted the rune. I mean, he's gonna get it at level two anyway. Uh, the the current problem is the fact that Spectre is denying everything. He gets that CS, so luckily that's gonna go fine. Meanwhile, bottom side, they actually put Ember Ember Spirit safe lane instead of mid lane. And uh, the the thing with Ember Spirit safe lane is that you will not win. Like you you will you'll be fine. I'm pretty sure you'll be okay in this lane. But with a core ogre magi and the Shadow Shaman constantly harassing you, Shadow Shaman is gonna have his work cut out for him because Ember Spirit can't really help you until he gets a few Whoa. more levels. That was sick from Pattern. Um, if you guys were watching Pattern on this Ember Spirit, uh, he was waiting till the tick expired on the Shadow Poison and then he slide of fisted the dodge of damage. So, very heads up play by uh, Pattern right there, but also a bit of dodgy play from ZSX. He should be popping that poison earlier to prevent that, but in any case, uh, just a cute play to point out. Pattern impressive so far. Yeah, that was. No, that's definitely one of those kinds of plays that just uh, sort of catches you for surprise. I'm sure ZSX did not expect that. Um, so, you know. And, uh, speaking of things that they don't expect, Pattern has 2 CS, so I don't think Raiden expects Pattern to have 2 CS at this point in the game. You definitely uh, want to have more than 2 CS at 2 minutes as a safety mm -hmm. carry. Okay. Uh, so, so the concept of a dead lane is you sack. Yeah. Oh, top lane. That could have been a uh, kill onto Potato Cat. Easy could have left for the kill here. He's going to take his time with this one, doesn't want to waste the mana. But if you don't use the mana, Potato Cat is going to get out safely. Arrow! Oh, arrow misses oh, by the minimum, the skin of his teeth, and now Sand King's the one in trouble. He doesn't have mana to get out safety, he's dead! Yeah, there's still a dagger. And then Izzy, I don't know why he didn't leap there. That was. That was... Izzy messed up. He had both arrow and leap to begin with. That was an easy kill on the Jakiro. Sand King committed because he didn't get the kill. Oh god. Um, that's a few yeah. Batman, no matter where you're at. Uh, that, that's kind of, the, kind of a problem, right? And, um. Alright, uh. Well, unless there's more action here that will happen, it looks like they're trying to set up. No, it's just gonna be relaxed. He skills Sandstorm second. I, this is really, this is really, really disagreeable here at this point. Uh, I, no caustic for now means this lane is just gonna be hard. Um, but besides the point, right? As I mentioned, 
Um, the concept of a dead lane is you sacrifice a lane so that the other lanes uh, get more farm priority. And that's that's sort of fine if it wasn't your carry that was getting dead lanes right now. And uh, that's kind of the, the, the problem here because the Ogre Magi has 15 CS versus the 9. And this Ember's not getting any. He's out of position. That's going to be a Brawl Strike onto him and Arrow as well. That's This time he's going to die. No. Yeah, he will. And uh, this is why... I think Sandstorm is fine as well, because it does give you a lot of fighting potential, and uh, you can, you know, Caustic Finale and Sandstorm, they do pretty much the same thing in lane. You just sit in the creep wave and just be a dick to melee heroes, right? So, um, yeah. it's fine for him to get the Sandstorm in that scenario, I think, uh, rather than Caustic Finale, but... Uh, well, he, he got it level 3 anyway, so, I mean, it's perfectly fine. It, that, that kill certainly helps. Um, so, uh, there's, there's, there's now some pressure. As you can see, if he got a cause. Uh, that Cossack Finale earlier, he would be pressuring much harder, but again, I, there's just a preference with that Burrow Strike uh, and that Sandstorm, obviously, you know, it's to each their own, but in most cases, I, I would pick up the uh, Cossack Finale here. Um, but right now, you know, finally getting some good CS, getting, getting some good harass, Cossack Finale doing all that work, but if you look at this the CS charts, again, uh, currently topping it is the Ogre Magi dominating the Ember Spirit right now by 7 CS, um, and the... The Spectre is not CSing terribly himself, so we're going to be seeing how that goes. Actually, mid lane, Puck tried to dive the Tiny. He gets the Silence off, gets the um, Orb off, so he will be able to uh, uh, to Orb away. Um, but yeah, at this point in time, uh, mid lane still looking fairly even here. Both mid lanes uh, one CS off from each other. Actually, Puck has six more denies. So that may perhaps, uh, 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 perhaps. We're gonna have a, a bit of oh. a, an issue here with the fake GG calls. Um, I know it is reflexive for some players to press that GG, but yeah, just, uh, don't be toxic. Um, in any case, uh, you're right about <laughs> the laning setup so far. Um, one thing though is that this Ember Spirit is catching up. Uh, he's had a bit more space now that the Ogre Magi is moving a bit out of lane and just uh, running this uh, Shadow Shaman down. Of course, Ogre Magi is still top of the CS, so he's not exactly losing anything. But you're kind of happy I, I, with this if you're Pattern, right? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Pattern yeah. gets CS again, and that's that's kind of um, kind of the kind of the thing. Uh, he finally gets some CS for himself. And I think it's because Paradigm and uh, ZSX actually really wants these runes, but the Shadow Sh Shaman, although he's very slow, he's going to get this boundary rune because neither of them have boots anyway. So um, there's kind of an unfortunate circumstance where they're trying to contest the Shadow Shaman, but they're not actually going to get anything. And killing Shadow Shaman here is not as good as shutting down this Ember Spirit at this point in time. Of course, right, in, in parallel, the Spectre is farming very nicely. So I guess... Uh, it doesn't. <laughs> it's it, it, it's regardless, right? Both teams will sort of be satisfied. Um, obviously, not uh, the same extent for NTFN, but at least they'll have a decent start this time, and not uh, you know, not have a rough lane um, go one or the other. Okay, the, the action is about to resume. Uh, the items that are being picked up right now, we're gonna see the bottle onto this park. Uh, you know, bottle onto tiny. Everything pretty much fine and standard. Uh, Tiny didn't get a rune there, so pretty sad for him. He wanted a bounty. And uh, boots are up on the Spectre and possibly the Ember Spirit holding on to 800 gold. So, as far as things go in this game, most of the people are getting farmed. The only ones not getting farmed are the support, so very, very standard so far. Yeah, um, the, the early pressure, of course, from Ember Spirit certainly sucks, but again, as you mentioned, he's, he's recovered. He's perfectly fine now. He's at an acceptable <laughs> CS standard. Um, of course, Ogre Magi going for that Midas. Um, kind of looking forward to seeing uh, their mid game, especially since uh, they're probably going to be playing around their tiny, right? Because again, Spectre needs kind of need that space. Um, he's going to tread Spectre, uh, tread Spectre into. Uh, well, we're going to be see. Uh, we're going to see what he's going to build into, but uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, absolutely. Looks like Lyle is going to try to. Be, he's going to be baited here into something, but the miss on that arrow, that was a pretty poor arrow, I want to say. And the Lilo is going to be able to get out to safety. Does he jaunt up to the high ground to follow this chase? Because he's going to get the kill if he does. Yes, he does. Misplay no from CSX there, had the stick. He had the stick and the mango to disrupt. Yeah, he, he didn't. He did neither, and uh, Tiny dies. Uh, 
unfortunately. Um, Puck did have more mana, so I think once that auto was fired, uh, it was just slowing down the inevitable. There was no bottle charges. There's nothing, anything uh, the Shadow Demon could really uh, give the Tiny to give him more HP. Uh, but again, perhaps del more delaying, delaying that would have bought much more time, so this Tiny could potentially have an outplay. Um, but you know, it's just sort of things that sort of things that just kind of happen. Um, you know, uh, that that sort of comes with just understanding and reflex and all that sort of stuff. So you know, you can't really blame him for that uh, too heavily. He did, of course, TP and expected to instantly disrupt, but did not have the mana. So unfortunate, but not as unfortunate uh, as as that. Uh, you know, arrow is going to be thrown out in this top lane. It's going to whiff and. Uh... Speaking of things happening, nothing is happening with this Mirana so far. I don't think <laughs> think he's landed an arrow. Um, they really need uh, to well, improve he, on this. He did go mid to to uh, to be moral support for that tiny kill. So I will say that um, tiny is getting ganked again by the Shadow Shaman. I mean, I wouldn't really call this a gank. Who's ganking who in this situation? Shadow Shaman's gonna get caught out. Avalanche toss available. Gonna use that immediately. Free kill on the tiny and it helps him recover, especially since this puck has much uh, much better items at this point in time. Uh, getting getting much more CS, much more denies, and Miracle at Dawn, I'm actually quite impressed how it's going. Top lane, Spectre is going to get gone on here. Spectre cannot afford to die this early. Uh, the Ice Path is going to make sure he doesn't. Uh, Jakiro is body blocked by all the creeps, though, and he's definitely going to die here. Burrow Strike still up. Spectre's not going to turn on this. He has too little HP. He's going to try and trade for the uh, Mirana here. Mirana getting attacked by the creeps. Creeps going to actually get that kill along with the Macro Pyre. Oh, sorry, not the Macro Pyre, the um, Dual Breath. Uh, gonna, gonna get that kill. Not expecting that amount of damage, uh, that Mirana, but he's still gonna be happy with how things turned out. You still get the kill first, you still get the EHP, so everything is A-OK. -okay. And, uh, yeah. Puck down in the bottom lane with that Invis rune, I don't think he was scouted out, but... Well, <laughs> Unfortunately. Been, uh, yeah, uh, both of them I, There's a sentry ward. Uh, no, that, that, no, that's the, that's their sentry that's ward, the, never mind. Really yeah. Good. Uh, so yeah, so I think it was just unfortunate timing in, in that case. Then they literally walked away as the puck walked in. Um, but maybe Ogre Magi, wrong place, wrong time here. Or oh, no, no, he already stopped the TP. TP. Oh, he stopped yeah, the he's TP. Just gonna so cancel he... It. Yeah, he, he wants this kill. Yeah. He's gonna right, get Magi's it. Gonna die. Uh, they have to be careful that there is no, no disruption yeah, again. And uh, oh, well, Shadow Demon, uh, he's gonna follow suit. Clean pick up two kills. No disruption again from the Shadow Demon. He could have disrupted the Ogre before the Ember Spirit finished his jump. Uh, just a few misplays. Uh, hopefully it doesn't overflow into the other lanes. Obviously this puck getting a very dumb, dominant lane topside actually. The Sand King gonna get jumped on by the Tiny. Good gank, uh, good counter oh, gank in fact. Lost the tree gonna sense land. Though. Yeah. Uh, the, the tree gonna land on the uh, Sand King there. Flat, falls flat in his face. Um, good kill, good counter gank. In fact, uh, both offlaners going down. Um, but I think the bigger offlaner that is that uh, that is taken down, I think, is the Sand King. If I'm being honest, right? Sand King. There's a lot more um, for NTFN than does o than Ogre Magi does. At, well, at this point in time, at least, right? Uh, once that Ogre Magi get th gets that Midas, dying once or twice won't really be too harmful. Um, is <laughs> and then Marana gets picked off again by Jakiro. He did uh, factor in the damage from the dagger there. Oh, that that's unfortunate. Yeah, that's quite unfortunate. Shadow Shaman TP is top as well. Spectre, you should really look to your right because Jakira was being chased. He's going to be fine though. They're too slow. <laughs> no wind lace on Shadow Shaman, so not not faster. Meanwhile, mid, I mean, sorry, bottom lane, Ember Spirit gets traded for naught because Tiny ganks and uh, Puck was mid lane farming out. Obviously not his fault. He used his TP, bear in mind, to try and go back into mid and then canceled that to kill the Ogre Magi, so uh, unfortunately, uh, Ember Spirit gonna get caught out, and they can't really afford these kinds of deaths on this Ember Spirit, of, of course, just only one, so it's not the worst thing in the world, consecutive deaths are where you start being worried, um, but of course, uh, you have to be worried as NTFN, right, because you're on a clock, and Nut is making that clock go faster every time they get a kill on your core. Pattern is being very aggressive down here when he's up against three heroes. Uh, he's going to take quite a bit of damage there, but the Moonlight Shadow is going to keep him alive. They have a sentry though. Pattern should still be fine. He has a lot of protection from that level 4 flame guard. And uh, in any case, Paradigm is just going to be chased out by these two heroes. Yeah, um, perfectly Shadow, fine. Save him. Yeah. Uh, good play. 
Yeah, solid play. He maxed Flame Guard first as well, so magic damage was really nothing there. Of course, a very good pickup against Tiny and uh, uh, Shadow Demon, of course. Right, just buys him some more time. He's going to want that maximum sleight of fist as soon as possible, though. It's kind of most of the damage on Ember Spirit at this point, aside from those remnants. Um, and yeah, we're going to be seeing uh, how how fast he can get those items up. Um, might go Maestrum. Oh. He's trying for an arrow in this top lane. He's just going to TP down to mid, and uh, he sees Lilo in the river. Miracle at dawn, does he have a dream call? That yes, arrow. he will. Whip on that arrow once again, but it doesn't matter because Starfall is here. That's all you need. That's a good disruption. Dodges the Starfall take. And now Lilo, he's going to be perfectly safe running up to the high ground. Brought to safety. Spectre is haunting it. Does he join the fray? No, he does not. Ember Spirit does pick up the kill onto Lilo in the backline with that haste rune. Running out to safety will be fine. Still has the Fairy Remnant. Arrow going to be caught by Ogre Magi, but he's a... Uh, Fat enough and far enough off that he's... Oh, Ember Spirit gonna turn yeah, back around. The return of the Ember Spirit, he's just keeping back the base, I think. And uh, now Miracle at Dawn, you gotta lay into this, Jakiro. You give them an inch and they take a mile. Welcome to NTFN. Yep, they get three kills and the tower as well. Um, the Ember Spirit actually got a haste rune, that's why he got that kill on Tiny so fast. Um, and as well, he didn't actually go back to base, he just like bottled up using all of his charges, went back in. Unfortunately, Ogre Magi and Shadow Demon uh, don't really <laughs> have any response for the Ember Spirit at this point in time, and he's gonna steal this stack, most likely. Uh, I think this was for the Spectre, or actually no, this was the, for the Tiny, obviously, right. Um, but unfortunately, they, w they won't be theirs anymore, um, at this point, taking all that money, um, from, from Inut. Uh, but, all the while, Spectre is still farming. Obviously, Ember Spirit now has more CS. If we look at net worth right now, Spectre and uh, Ember Spirit still fighting for it. Um, but you have to wonder, right? What's scarier at this point? I mean, obviously Ember Spirit, but like, what's scarier later? I should say, um, is <laughs> is kind of the kind of the thought uh, NTFN kind of has here. Uh, what's scary is running up the high ground with no vision, and it's gonna happen right here. But uh, scary doesn't mean anything when you have your team behind you smoked up. The drink ball onto too easy clean up with the Q on the Mirana, and now Potato Cat is running out to safety. We see the Moonlight Shadow being thrown out to secure the safety of the Shadow Shaman. Not in time, however, he's still gonna fall. And now Potato Cat, he's on the run. Lilo standing still in the middle of a fight, uh, a bit dodgy right there. He's still very, very tanky though, trying to clean up this Miracle at Dawn, but Miracle at Dawn still very, very happy. Still oh. has that atmosphere, and the arrow oh. comes in to clean up that kill. Tiny eats it in the face. An inch is a mile, how many times are you less than the, the th Oh, I mean, okay, so they are, NTFN, I, I absolutely love this, right? They're executing the kill everyone around the Spectre strategy very well. Uh, obviously, if the other four players on Spectre's team is not doing as good, then Spectre by himself will not be, be enough. Um, so... Again, this is kind of the strategy you always go when you're against an opposing super, super core, right? Like the Spectre. You kill everyone around him, and then once the Spectre finally comes out, his team will not be strong enough to just stand behind him at least, right? All they have to do is survive, and the Spectre will give them that damage output because if Spectre is the only target, on then all this is going to run down. They still have to Starfall and Arrow. You can't that is he can't afford to die like this. He really needs that radiance, and uh, unfortunately, he gets caught out here. Uh, there was no vision uh, for him, but uh, aside from that, he probably should have been farming uh, quite closer to the jungle while there was no vision of the enemy team. But of course, that's just hindsight 2020. It's whatever. Um, but yeah, the good kill on the Spectre. Keeping him down means that it delays those items. He did get two kills earlier, so it... It, so that one death is Potato really gonna help. Potato Cat just messed up by tipping behind this tower because they're gonna dive him and kill him. Yeah, Spectre is uh, also she's messed up. As well. This Hello? is gonna be a 4v2 here. Tiny's rotating. Oh, Lilo is in the corner out. though. They don't see this Tiny. They don't know that he's here. They're gonna try for that arrow. They miss, however. Lilo has the Blink Dagger. This is going to be the reveal. Can they get something with it? Uh, Marana actually caught him, and I'm pretty sure they know he has a Blink Dagger now because that the the yeah, Marana just like saw him and left so yeah unfortunately that's gonna be the tiny blink reveal wasted and the spectre gonna die again here Arrow i was gonna mention by this jakiro and the spectre is dead can they get the jakiro as well they probably can because the amber spirit is here to clean up with the chains onto one hero lilo sees it happening nothing he can do 
I, I was gonna mention that Spectre TP, I don't really like that because he knew there was five there, or in fact at least hypothesized there was five there. So the best course of action was to literally go the opposite end of the map. And he didn't. He wanted to defend that tier one tower and two deaths in a row. I, I mentioned this, right? Several deaths in a row is when you start getting concerned, and that was several deaths in a row. So uh, and didn't NTFN, even have to beat it. He had the horns. So. Yeah, absolutely. Ogre's gonna get caught out bottom as well. This is not good. They're falling. <laughs> they're, they're getting caught out way too often, way too many times here. NTFN doing a good job of buying time because they understand, right? We gotta pick up the pace, keep it fast. But of course, uh, being fast doesn't also mean throw the game. So I, I really do appreciate the fact that they not not only are they playing fast, but they're also playing smart. So uh, that's well done from them. Uh, Jakiro, obviously, get over here. Just the mech power and the wave. I gonna try to go onto the Sand King. That is a kill yeah. and the nice pop onto him. The Dream Pearl is gonna be thrown out to keep arrow. himself alive. And Tiny eats oh. an arrow once again. Snuffle dropped onto his head. He's very, very low. The, the Shaman was keeping two heroes trapped up here. And uh, in any case, Shisui does appear, cleans up this Sand King, and uh, they don't have enough damage to take down Shisui. So, the right play. Oh, Lilo, though, you stepped out. That is so unsafe. Tiny is not respecting this puck damage enough. Ember's going to walk in here. Spectre is going to get caught out. At this point of time. And Ember just cleans them up. Ember's just going to jump in. Yeah, There's Slide of Fist still available, but Puck's going to steal that, yeah. The Shadow Demon uh, and the Ogre Magi are running for their lives. Blood. They want him! Can they get him? They saw him! They saw him right there! They smell the blood! They get the chains out onto him! He's running up to the high ground. There is still a lot of oh. mana on this Ember Spray. He's going to chase to the ends of the earth, and he gets it. Slide of Fist doing so much damage there. It is maxed out, so that's 160 bonus damage every hit, plus the Maelstrom procs. And they really, yeah, they can't, they can't afford this. They, they're losing too much. The Spectre feels like he want, he, he has to fight, but he doesn't. Go farm, my dude. You, you, you didn't need that Sand King kill. In fact, farming is literally better than getting that kill because that was just a, that was a Sand King kill. Right, it's much better if he gets this Radiance as soon as possible, and he could have probably gotten it at this point if he just continued to farm and he didn't die so many times in a row. But you know, he he just needs time, and unfortunately, uh, with the time he's given, it hasn't been enough. And as you can see, NTFN is crushing the issue as uh, the Spectre is unable to really pose a threat at this point. There is some consolation. Lilo does pick up the top T1 tower, so that is something going to be of dire. Uh, a lot of credit due to Miracle at Dawn here. He was 8-0 and zero on that Rubik in the last game, and then he died twice, you know, at the ending when he really couldn't do anything. But uh, this time he's 8-0 and zero again, 8-0 and 9. Uh, we'll see if 8 continues to be an unlucky number for him, or if he can get something done here. The, I, I just gotta give credit to the Ember Spirit, right? He, his, he start, his lane started out really rough. And he indeed died even twice. I actually Herald don't know. walking into heroes like this. The epicenter going to be dropped onto ZSX. And now... Midas is on off cooldown. Oh, no. Magi, why? He didn't get that oh, Midas Lilo. off. He didn't blink. He could have. But they don't have enough reach to catch him. They're going to try if Lilo walks out a bit further. Nah, he didn't walk out to the creeper. So that was a smart play from him. I, I was just gonna mention again, right, that I give credit to Ember Spirit because his early game was not the greatest start. He had like three CS while the Ogre had ten, and he turned that around. He definitely turned that around. Engaged, uh, engaged in a lot of fights. In fact, I think almost all of them, uh, since he got that uh, drums of endurance and phase boots. So I do really appreciate how he's fighting and how he's handled his uh, his his start. Tiny gonna try and get a Marana kill, but in fact. He's so weak at this point that he can't get that either. Hey, he arrow, arrow to the face, he will! Oh no, that's a DD puck! And uh, trying to lay into him, just get the silence off in time. Yes, he does, but uh, is he going to chase? It seems a bit risky to chase at this point. Yeah, he probably won't. And uh, he's being gone on right now. Too risky. Windmaker already did. Roma does get a good duo shackle shot. And now Ember Spirit is here to clean up the fight. ZSX is going to fall for sure, no matter how much he disrupts. And you, Miracle of Dawn, does he see anything else with his orb? He okay. He 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 turns around to get that shadow shaman kill and trades three heroes for that. And, and he's uh, probably getting those He's chasing for that. Oh, hero. never mind. He missed the slide of fist. Unfortunately, the creeps were prioritized by the slide of fist there, or perhaps he just missed the searing chains entirely. Regardless, right? That was just a bonus kill. Um, but what happened was that he went in for that shadow shaman kill, 
but at no escape. So, yes, there's no four staff on this ogre. There's no four staff on Jakiro. There's nothing to help him leave. So, I got a question why he went for that Shadow Shaman kill when there were so many there. He should have just left, you know, fight, uh, live to fight another day, and instead uh, lives to come back into the fountain. So, uh, can I. Actually, he feels pressured, so pressured, in fact, that he's skipping the Echo Saber for BKB. They smoke on the ward. So NTF, uh, they smoke right on the ward. I don't know this is coming. Can they do something about it? They did not notice the ward. They're going to try to do something, and uh, that something seems to be Lilo. So Lilo might get screwed if he walks up this high ground. He is oh. going to walk there, and they're going to go onto him. The Dream Core is thrown out, and uh, everyone is coming, even the Sand King Epicenter, everything. The Disruption will keep him alive for a few seconds. Oh. Lilo going with the Q, not enough damage to, ch to turn the fight around. Lilo dying as well, but at this point, space created, right? This, this Spectre is still farming as much as possible. He finally gets that Radiance, but he doesn't realize he's no, on top of a war. They know where he is, he's they know where he is. He's gonna get hexed up. That is a hex. A 22 minute hex on this puck. Absolutely. He's godlike. He's so fat right now. See, this is what happens when you're on a playmaking hero and not a Rubik mid lane. This is absolutely destructive from Miracle of Dawn. I, I gotta give him credit. He's so, so well versed on this puck. Jumping in the right times, making sure he avoids, um, uh, he makes, making sure he avoids those uh, wrong engagements and always in the right position at the right time, pressuring the top side. And uh, a lot of the time, right, he's always, he's always there. He's, he's, I believe he's in almost every kill they've ever had. Yeah, 24 participation out of 27 kills. And it, it all boils down to these fights that Inet are taking. It's, uh, it's, it's, they're not very good. And the Spectre, again, dying three times didn't help either, right? Because now he's going for a cloak, um, which is... Oh my. Okay, so which uh, is... Dyer just smoked up, and yeah, then and they... the Ogre Midas the creep. So the Mirana saw it, which is why he was spamming new meta. Because, uh... uh... <laughs> yeah. I'm not... I mean, that's not how you smoke gank. I, I, it might have been smoke gank for wards. You know, it was smoke gank for wards, in fact. Um, which is nice, you know, uh, you don't necessarily have to smoke gank to kill and it's a smart choice to not fight because again every time they try to fight they've traded a support for pretty much half their team. So again, I kind of I kind of um, kind of like that they use the smoke like that very smart play. They gotta buy some time. Uh, I'm not sure how at this point. No, what the fuck are you I'm... talking about dude? That was not a fucking good play at all. <laughs> that is a smoke. It was a smoke rewards, my dude. I mean, at this point, what did they really fight, right? What did they pick off at this point? If you look at the enemy team, what did they use to pick off? I mean, off? you don't really want to use the smoke for that reason, and uh, doesn't matter. The Dream Call is going to be thrown onto this time. He's going to be hacked up as well. A bit of stacking of stun doesn't really matter. Arrow going to be eaten by someone? No. Paradigm turns around in time to dodge that arrow, but uh, you can't really dodge this Ember Spirit with an Agony Scepter. He's just going to run all around the map. Disruption onto this Ember Spirit doesn't really matter. Just buying a bit of time. Going up to the high ground. Potato Cat, goodbye. And uh, ZSX, welcome to the well. Uh, well, we did mention, right, that we if you kill everything around the Spectre, Spectre will just not be a factor, but Spectre's not even a factor to begin with, so... It's... Uh, it's really hard. It's, the fights are really hard. Buyback comes out in the Shadow Demon, but at this point, he can disrupt, and that's about it. Um... Yeah, he, he dies if he just walks out at this point, because Ember is just going to dive yeah. onto him. Yeah, Ember knew it. He just <laughs> ran straight in. If he if he uh, slight if he if he uh, if he slights the earrings, you this, eat the uh, oh, that was close. They have to forfeit these racks if they want to stay in this game. They can't afford to defend these. Actually, no, they're not going to opt for it. They respect the uh, the respawns. Uh, I mean, that's kind of that's that's good restraint. Oh, like ships in the night here. Uh, Spectre actually just avoids death, yeah, but no, he walks straight back into it. He walked straight under the ward. They didn't know that was warded. Ships in the it, light, but there was a lighthouse right up there on that cliff. Yeah, unfortunately, Spectre. Uh, I, I think I think what this boils down to, right, is those initially those those first three deaths the Spectre had. Before then, he was two zero, right, which is already good for a Spectre at this. I uh, like, I believe it was fifteen minutes in. Um, like it's. It just sucks, right? Because he died once, which is perfectly fine. He got caught out, 
right? Or rather, he didn't know they were ganking him. But the second time was because he TP'd to the top tower to defend it as a specter against five heroes. So, it's... Uh, they smoke again. Uh, I'm telling you, dude, they're smoking to D-Ward. You ever feel like you just gotta, you know, take a smoke, take a chill, you know, life is stressful. Yeah. This is like yeah, that I mean, video game form, you know? I, I, again, what, <laughs> what can they really do here? They're kind of waiting for the Spectre to carry them, but they, they, their carry has died five times. So, it's gonna take a while. Like, um, <coughs> I believe every level. every death is is precious, especially on a carry like this. Because that's not only gold lost, but time lost. And that's, the, that's a big important factor there is the time lost. And uh, you're certainly wasting time if you smoke randomly. They almost catch Miracle of Dawn there. They do catch him. They throw him back out. <laughs> the AWP is on cooldown. It is up now, though. Yeah, oh. he's gonna die for sure. That is a Why big kill. 1,000 gold. That was definitely almost 2k gold from the bounty itself. Jakiro gets an instant 4 staff, but you gotta wonder if maybe Spectre wanted that more. I mean, that would have been, uh, that, that would have been a reaver, 100%. But, you know, yeah, a kill is a kill is a kill. So, they will be, they will appreciate that. Um, and Jakira decides for a Yule Scepter instead of a Force Step. Um, I mean, to be fair, I guess that is and that's, that is still a solid item uh, in general for this fight. Uh, San King goes mechanism. I, I love this build on San King, actually. He decides, you know what? I'm not going to play Greedy. I'm not going to buy a Veil. I'm going to go Pipe into Mech, into Greaves, because that's what my team needs. And I'm not an individual player. I'm a team player. Um, and I appreciate that. You know what that. the team needs Roshan? They're just going to walk into the pit. Oh, they changed their mind. They see ZXX on the high ground. That's gonna be a double change on two people. And, uh, yeah, goodbye. Oh, double kill here. Um, I think, I believe both of them were trying to set up wards for Roshan, but they didn't really have to walk up like that. Uh, the Roshan potential for NTFN is quite difficult. Uh, it, it will take a while, but what does, what does I not do to stop them, to be honest? So, they will get this. So if you're the captain of Inut at this point in time, what do you do to stop the bleeding? What's your advice? Uh, it, it's really rough. Find pickoffs, right? These smoke ganks have mostly been for wards, uh, and uh, NTFM has been have been grouping up. So what I would say is, again, buy more time for the Spectre. Spectre, you have to avoid. You have to understand your side of the map is probably the most dangerous part of the map. If you haven't noticed, by the way, NTFM have not been on their side of the map for decades. In fact, they haven't been there for the last 10 minutes. So if the Spectre just walked to the opposite end of the map, he would be in the safest position in the on the map. Um, but unfortunately, you know, that's that's all about hindsight and game understanding. And I'm not saying he's a bad player, but he just doesn't know that that side of the map is safe. So I, I can kind of understand that he wants to farm uh, on his side. And the <laughs> Ever Spirit Chomp... Oh, he jumps out the tree. You know, he's going to get stunned up here. That's a mistake. Yeah, no thing, detection. No. Dream Core is here, they're gonna turn it around. And yeah, the egg is actually so even if he died, it wouldn't have been a mistake. The chains out onto everyone, and the uh, slide of fist is gonna be thrown out. Dead already! Spectre's dead. Buys back? Does he buy back? He has to buy back. He has to press the trigger. He has to pull the trigger, I think. Jumping up onto the high ground. That is Ember Spirit. He's really, really fearless. He wants Potato Cat. Potato Cat is gonna land that ice bomb onto Spectre the bought back to Haunt Ember Spirit is falling extremely low. He still has a lot of spirit, Whoa. so very, very healthy at this point of time for an Ember Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> 15 second cooldown on that remnant. He was getting away. <laughs> um, Spectre actually bought back to haunt in and almost died again in the middle of four heroes. Arrow gonna be eaten by down. this oh, tiny. No. Oh no! I hear an epicenter. What's the on? It's on. Uh, uh... Okay, Spectre Dagger actually prevents the Sankey from blinking. Oh, and now they're gonna start to do this. They're gonna turn around. Oh, Silar to fall. That is a lucky haste rune for the Sand King. And uh, they get an Aethos out. Mirana, you have to keep running. Run, baby, run! Arrow is going to be thrown out. Not going to be caught by anybody, but these people, they're nothing without that Ember Spirit. The Toss puck is on the opposite end of the map. Shadow the Shaman, puck is on the other... <laughs> The Puck is on the end other end of the map, so he can't really come here to fight. Shadow Shaman goes down in the back line, they finally clean him up. The Puck finally arrives, gets the TP back off cooldown, oh, buyback on the Shadow Shaman Spectre, and the Spectre, Spectre's gonna die, Spectre's gonna die with no buyback. Down, Genesis, Tiny's gonna buyback. Get... Seconds the Spectre forward. gets the last inspiration. Tiny, he's very, very tanky, but not tanky enough. And the Ember Spirit is gonna be here to just clean everyone up. Arrow's gonna be eaten once again by the Shadow Demon. Cleaned up on one hero, cleaned up on two hero. Janitor Dota. Uh, I mean... 
that was one of the, one of the more classic blunders, right? We get two kills. GG is uh, called. Yeah, they know it. There's no way you're lasting six seconds without this back to end of time. Yeah, I mean, it was a classic blunder of seeing Puck top and like, guys, guys, let's go, let's go get some kills, and then the Puck just TPs back and then turns the fight. So, unfortunately, uh, I not has had enough, um, and they understand that they're way too far behind. Um, and I think, again, the problem there was the early deaths on the Spectre, right? Um, he wasn't a threat to begin with, so the pressure from the other four heroes, uh, if I'm being honest, went all for naught. Just, again, because he wasn't farming. In fact, he had roughly the same net worth as the Tiny at the end there, so you got you got a question um, positioning there a little bit. Oh, of course, you know, getting caught out is also... Uh, perfectly valid, uh, but again, probably misplayed. But you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Twenty 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 hindsight. They did go one for one, um, and their draft wasn't bad at all either. In fact, both drafts uh, were perfectly fine in my eyes. Uh, NTFN played theirs to perfection, or at least near perfection uh, for this for this fight. Um, uh, but unfortunately for Inat, they will not take this second win. Yeah. So it is a one for one, which is possibly the most interesting ending, right? Because uh, everything is wide open at this point of time, ladies and gentlemen. And you just saw what these two teams have to offer. NTFN, absolute ball to the wall, though, you know, heavy aggression on the accelerator the entire time. And the INUT, you saw that slow, tactical, grinding victory. They already had victory from the first minute, I want to say, from that draft. And they definitely played it to perfection there. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you just saw... NTFN play Samsung Galaxy S Nut. The score is one to one. I was joined by Blue Sapphire and my least favorite man of all time, Lolly Enigmatic. Thanks. Uh, do, you, do you want to do a post game interview? Actually, Mesa, you can do one. Uh, who are we interviewing? Because I I do have um, questions for some of these teams, like and, like non Mimi. Okay. All good. So um, who who's Who's being interviewed? Uh, I'm right now. Oh, good. Who asked you me? A... Ask for I don't listen to me. Fuck this. I have, uh, I have, yeah, I, I, I have, I have the drafts here. So, Let's see. <laughs> Uh, it's good to be back, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Uh, very fun to always just class these uh, SCA Dota tournaments. I'm sure Blue Sapphire, you're gonna concur as well. It was a uh, great. Uh, time. It was it was pretty fun watching uh, watching these two teams. Right, Southeast Asian Dota is always uh, very hyper aggressive and interesting, right? Um, and yeah, it's just good to see. Uh, you know, because I originally I'm from the Philippines, so you know I I kind of I'm kind of used to this kind of Dota where it's pretty crazy not gonna lie um but i've i've my my my, my play style has slowed down over the years um uh, but yeah you know um it's, it's it's still quite interesting um to to cast for uh atdl um yeah and uh both of you who really really want to continue casting or you know if, if you guys want to join the casting team always you know, just speak to your admins you know grab yourself a cheap microphone doesn't have to be anything special just hit yourself up to the discord and uh, slowly ease yourself into it it's always great um welcome to all the new players from atdl by the way uh it's uh how many seasons have you been atdl now blue sapphire i don't fucking know i was literally one of the first casters with um i believe uh, how am i blanking on his name i'm actually I so could? sad I'm Ivan's, is it? Mm. No, it was... I think Ivan's was the first cast, I'm not really sure. No, uh, how did Stinky I forget Pie, his name? Stinky Pie, actually... Stinky Pie came later. Stinky Pie came later. Stinky Pie came later. I, literally, I was one of... I, I The first casters was me, and... Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick myself for that. I forgot yeah, that, his that's name. That's what happens when you're an old man, you know, so... Yeah, um, I know, I'm fucking know. old. You're yeah, fucking old, but, so... Yeah, so I was, yeah, I casted for ATDL back when, you know, when it was just a Reddit post and I was like, cool, I want to, I want to join this. And then they were like, oh, does anyone want to cast this? I was like, sure. And then I casted for them. And, you know, it was, it, again, it was, it's, I still remember that the first cast, it was literally eight hours of just eight different teams, uh, sorry, 16 different teams, uh, one game each, you know, it, it was fun. It was honestly very fun. Um, and I, again, I still remember that. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm so veteran. That I forgot my co-caster. I can't believe it. Oh my god. I can't believe it. I'm actually so annoyed. 
And uh, Enigmatic has been here for uh, two seasons as well, I think, the same time as me, right? So yeah. Enigmatic, he joined to us at the end of season two. Oh, oh yeah. nice. That's two seasons now where we've been uh, doing the 30. You're awesome, dude. Every, I mean, yeah. Every oh. night, I, every night, you know, I, I go under his bed and then... I <laughs> oh, shit. You're the monster under his bed? Jesus. Monster? No, he's the monster. No, he's the monster under my bed. <laughs> every, every when I need something, I just like, I, I just like you know, lean over my bed. Just uh, sometimes uh, I lean my other half over <laughs> instead of my head. I lean my other half uh, over and enigmatic. Do we have uh, one of the FTF players? Okay. Oh, perfect. I do wanna, I do wanna talk to. I, I have a couple of questions. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, it's okay. Um, there we go. Hello, Mr. Windmaker. How you doing, Mister? Oh, it's Hi. a, it's a, it's a miss. Hello. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> that's how you start an interview on the right. Yeah, note. that's how you start an interview right there. Um, hello, Miss Windmaker. How you doing? Yes, hi. Okay, perfect. So, um, for NTFN, right? Um, first and foremost, I want to talk about your win one game, obviously, because that's much more fun to talk about. Um, for for the draft. Uh, when you saw the, I believe it was Jakiro and Ogre, um, what were your thoughts initially? Like, because I, I saw you guys took your time actually to pick out the bands, um, or rather your, your, your first two picks. So what was like your thoughts there? What was the, what was the discussion during that time? To be fair, it was a combination of what the fuck is this and what the fuck are we going to do? <laughs> oh my God. Well, that's, that's fair enough. I mean... Uh, that when you picked, um, I believe it was Marana uh, Shadow Shaman. Did you expect the Marana to be support uh, at all times, or was that sort of like, oh, maybe we'll put this mid, or maybe we'll put this core, or was it just like, ah, this is support one hundred percent, or it was the support. Ah, uh, okay. So, I mean, that's pretty good. Um, did you expect the Spectre, by the way, or something along those lines uh, when mm. you came into that? Not really. Really? So you just sort of had this idea of like just just fucking run at them, essentially. Uh, um, yeah, pretty much, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that that's fair enough. It's very solid. Um, and I do want to talk about that first game, right? So what was the idea? But uh, obviously, I've not been, um, I've not seen your strategies yet or the pocket strats, right? So what was the idea behind Gyrocopter Crystal Maiden? Because uh, as my understanding of it is that it, the early game defensive capabilities is quite small in comparison to other support duos. Uh, that was a Pepega pick. My support said <laughs> Gyro 4 and we were like, let's go. Oh, I mean, well, first game, right? <laughs> I mean, first game of the day, am I right? That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Uh, you know, understandable. Um, but it's always, uh, it's always, it was always good. Alright, uh, it does take a lot of courage to go into this game 2 after you've lost game 1 pretty soundly and you're just like, let's just play some Balls to the Wall Dota. And uh, Balls to the Wall Dota, you know, it, it works a lot of times and uh, it, it works from a solid basis of very good support. And uh, you did a very good job down at bottom lane, uh, keeping the pressure off of the Ember Spirit, despite the fact that, you know, you're under so much aggression from the Ogre Magi and the Shadow Demon. Uh, I just want to say, um, as a support player, you know, would you have any sort of insights as to why this game two went the way it did? What was the difference between this and game one in your mentality as a as a player? I think game two it was more of the draft because we had a way. I guess we are more confident with the draft compared to game one. And I mean, with proper support like Shaman and Mirana, obviously you have more space to work with. <laughs> Who drafted game one? Uh. My coach. Oh. <laughs> uh, all okay. Right, uh, so, so different strokes for different folks. Um, what works in <laughs> Immortal Dota doesn't necessarily work here. So, yeah, um, it's always a nice learning experience, and I always want to see teams like you. Uh, you know, all these sort of teams just have their own sort of playstyle. So, thank you very much for coming in. Uh, do you have any messages for anyone? Yeah, any shout outs? Anything like that? Not really. Except, nah, it's fine. Right, so Windmaker just wants to tell the whole world that she doesn't really like any. She doesn't. Care. Uh, she doesn't yeah. want to tell. Oh yeah, I, 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 one last question actually. Uh, before you head out, um, why did you guys ban Naga? Did you, you just hate the hero? Yes. 
Okay, well, that's fair enough. There we go. Quick answer, quick question. <laughs> well, man, that's going to sound really bad. You saying in an interview that you hate Nagas. Oh. No, I, I don't hate Naga. My team does. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, uh, thank you very much for tuning in, guys. I think that's going to be it for the day. Um, once again, you know, you guys might want to introduce yourselves and then we'll do an outro, Mr. Lolly. Lolly? Okay. Yeah, I, um, well, thanks for watching. You know did this already, but uh, we got word from May that uh, we had a, an interview that's going to happen. So, uh, thanks for watching. Sorry for uh, the data for production value. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, thank you to uh, my boys Yoshi, Yo, Yo, I call him Yoshi, Yoamushi, and uh, Blue Sapphire for casting me. And uh, hope you guys see you next time. Okay, good night. Thanks.